Always Oklahoma plays Colorado tough here. Colorado perfect. They're living on the edge. The Colorado cardiac buffaloes, they've called them. A couple of last-second wins this year, but their all-star tailback, Rashan Salam, says this is a team that has earned everything it's received so far this year. I don't believe a team's a destiny. I think we're a team of hard work, you know, because out of, out of 105 players, 100 of us stayed for the whole summer and worked out and ran with Doc Crease, so I think all this is due to hard work. Gary Danielson, that's a kid that's worked hard enough to be the number two rusher in the country. Absolutely. Everyone has uh, seen him run the ball and knows how well he runs it. When, when you're a single black, you have to do other things. So Rashad blocks. He's a committed blocker. He's a receiver, the second leading receiver on this football team, and he's durable. He'll carry the ball a lot, and he'll be the focal point. Colorado, three ranked teams coming up again in the next three weeks. It starts tonight against the Sooners of Oklahoma in the Big Eight, and we'll have it coming up shortly before we send it back right now to Mike Tirico. Michael. All right, Ralphie getting ready to run. We'll get it back out to Boulder before Ralphie runs in about, oh, 12 minutes or so. In the interim, we're going to take you back to Tennessee, give you some uh, post-game reaction from the great third Saturday in October meeting. Also put the day in perspective with Craig, Lee, and Chris, who are in Ann Arbor. Right now, let's go to Alabama and rejoin Mike. Let's go to Colorado. Brad Nessler, your turn. Ed, talk to me. Sign up at all Okay. Well, Mike, a huge game tonight in the Big Eight. There was one earlier with Kansas State sticking with Nebraska, but the Cornhuskers were able to hold on. Now we find out the same today whether Colorado can survive Oklahoma. The line can be fine between good and great. Sometimes good fortune can make a champion. Colorado has won in cardiac fashion. While Oklahoma is looking to find its earlier form after Lady Luck left them last week in the Cotton Bowl. Tonight, CU's national title dream continues with the Sooners coming to town. Beautiful night on the base of the Colorado Rocky Mountains. In Boulder, they love their buffalo. And where the buffalo roam is where the Sooners invade town. Folsom Field in Boulder as we get set for the fourth ranked team in the land against the Oklahoma Sooners. And with what went on today, Colorado can move up in the national rankings if they win. Florida, having lost to Auburn, will drop down. Nebraska and Penn State will move up. Colorado can do likewise if they can get by Oklahoma tonight. And I agree with Carson if he doesn't get run over by Ralphie Three. Well, Brad, just as before the Buffalo took the field here, same kind of talk I've been hearing all week long, all this talk about a national title. You know, these guys speak very boldly and openly about it. It's not like other programs I've been around where guys say, oh, geez, national championship. Don't they say that so loudly. We can't talk about it. Michael Westbrook told me something interesting, though. He said, you know, with our schedule and our record now, one loss could mean immediate elimination. Something else you got to keep in mind. These guys haven't played here at home since we were here with Wisconsin three weeks ago. But consider the fortune that they have had in the last three weeks and the top 20 schedule they've got coming up in the next three weeks. Now, some play-by-play -play announcer suggested earlier this week that if the Buffaloes run the table, they deserve the national championship. Brad, may I second that motion? Well, I tell you what, it's a pretty big table, and it gets a little bit bigger tonight in the Big Eight. The Sooners are here. The Buffaloes are waiting on them. We've got the kickoff when we come back. Now, there's a brand new motor. Clear and cool. 52 cool. A possibility, though, that some rain could move in. And at this elevation, <laughs> the rain could get a little white before the game's over if it cools off too fast. But right now, it's perfect. Gary Gibbs wishes things were a little more perfect in his sixth season at Oklahoma. The heat is on. Having lost to Texas again, he is 0-4-1 against Colorado. And Bill McCartney, the winningest coach this program's had in his 13th year, 
And is this a team of destiny? Well, certainly things have gone the Buffalo's way in the late stages of a couple of huge games already this year. Oklahoma won the toss. They've deferred and will kick. And that means James Kidd will drop back deep for Colorado. Nine game winning streak on the line for the Buffaloes in front of a hometown crowd. And as Adrian said, at home cooking must have tasted good this week. They haven't played on this field since the last time we were here when they took on and trampled Wisconsin. I think trampled was a key word in that. Uh, <laughs> I was out on the field. It's perfect out on the field. Everyone was throwing the ball perfectly, and it was a no, weather's no factor yet. Scott Blanton has got it teed up. The three and two suitors. And the 5-0 and oh, Buffalo. James Kidd's got to let it go. And that means Cordell Stewart and the Colorado offense will have to take over at the 20-yard line as we give you the Russell Athletics starting lineups. Rashawn Salam, we've talked about him. He's the leading scorer in the country coming in to tonight's game, joining Cordell Stewart in what Gary has said is really a two-back set. Ray Carruth back after an ankle sprain kept him out a week ago with Westbrook Fourier and Lepsis and up front Heath Irwin a knee injury ligament damage against Texas he's playing through the pain with Bertie Stoltenberg Naoli and Derek West in its first and ten Colorado <laughs> opening play of the ball game Salah hurdles his way for almost eight yards Peters made the tackle defensively for Oklahoma. And the OU defense looks like this up front. Cedric Jones, their lead man, six sacks with Lewis and Campbell. Tyrell Peters, a sophomore, is their leading tackler from the linebacking core with Rosenberg, Freeman, and DeQuazy. And in the secondary, there's been a shuffling going on. Back up strong safety, Wendell Davis starts for Larry Bush on the corner with Johnson, Henderson, and Anthony Fogel. And it's second down and a long two, Colorado. Opening drive of the ball game. Salam's got a first down, and he's got about three more. Out to the 33-yard line goes Rashawn before Mario Freeman and Tyrell Peters can make the stop. There's his numbers on the season. A very impressive 179 per game. Brad, talking in with Rashawn Salam and just watching him play football, you can really come to appreciate how balanced and the, the entire package that he has, the way he blocks, the way he runs, and the way he receives. That's why he's so valuable to the football team. So a first down, one minute into the action. Colorado from the 33-yard line. Nice play fake by Stewart and fires it out. Complete. Ray Carruth paid the price on the corner as Darius Johnson came up and got him low. And the cartwheel landed him right about at the line of scrimmage. Johnson, the junior, out of Terrell, Texas. One of the best cover men in that secondary for the Sooners. Talking to defensive coordinator Tom Hayes from Oklahoma, he said the key to the game for Oklahoma on defense is not to allow Colorado to run between the tight ends. Last year they pushed Oklahoma up and down the field. He said if we, if they're successful running inside the tight ends, we're in trouble. And remember, that's a two tight end situation at all times. Second down, seven. Outside goes Salam. Puts his head into Wendell Davis and carries him out of bounds into the Colorado bench as he got it across the 40-yard line. It'll be short of a first down by a couple. What's tough about this balanced offense for Colorado with two tight ends, two wide receivers, is it forces the defense to commit one of their secondary people's to people to either one side of the formation or the other. There's no strong side of the formation. So Cordell Stewart is able to go up there, run a check with me offense, and either run it right or left away from the defensive strength. Colorado great on third down, almost 51% as you saw. Third and three here from their own 40-yard line. Michael Westbrook in motion. Stewart looks to Westbrook. Got it. First down, Colorado at the 47-yard line. Michael Westbrook, uh, no doubt an All-American candidate as a wide receiver. A couple years ago, a thousand plus seasons. Just a simple cool route. When you get Michael Westbrook, he's such a big receiver out there. Look at that's well covered by the Oklahoma secondary. But I can guarantee you 
that when Cordell Stewart throws a curl like that, that ball is not in the air a half a second. You he said, can really zip it. You said to me, Westbrook is huge when you get down there. It is unbelievable. First down, Colorado at the 48 yard line. Opening drive, they started at their own 20. Rashawn Salam. And Rashawn takes it into the OU end at the 48. Campbell made the stop defensively for the Sooners. One unique part of this offense also is the depth of the guards for Colorado and what they're required to do because of that depth. You'll see Colorado's guards here very deep lined up. What they do is come around because of that depth and pick off linebackers. This time, Naoli comes around, picks off the inside linebacker, Mario Freeman that time, and you'll look at that all night. The guards are really, Brad, deeper than the quarterback in the alignment. They sure are. Got around for four yards. Second down and six, seventh play of the Buffalo's drive. Stewart, nice play fake. Gonna go to his safety valve, and it's a tight end, and he's rumbling. Lepsis, first down, lost the ball, but it goes out of bounds. Lepsis really took a shot at about the 36-yard line from Peters, and he's still down. Big hit by Tyrell Peters, the guy I talked about, who's their leading tackler, just a sophomore. A true sophomore also, freshman All-American last year, and that's really the key for Oklahoma in this game. If they could force a couple turnovers, Colorado has done a good job of not turning the ball over in their own end this, this season, and uh, Oklahoma needs a couple stops like that to slow down the offense. Cordell Stewart faking the slam on this play, looks downfield, doesn't have it, and then he knows he has a drop-off to the outside. That's the patience I think Cordell Stewart has brought to his game in 1994 that he didn't have a year ago. Here's the hit at the end against the huge tight end. Right there, that one, right in the kidneys, below the eights to Matt Lepsis, the sophomore out of Frisco, Texas, and he is still face down. 6'5", 250-pounder, and the perfect bookend tight end for Christian Fourier on the other side. So an injury with 11.55 to go first quarter. A Pearl Street Mall here in Boulder, Colorado. You can find some free spirits down there, I'll tell you that much. Out here, Colorado has moved it down the field in their opening drive. Lepsis, the tight end, up on his own power. Desmond Dennis is coming to take his spot in the lineup. But Matt did get a first down before he was tagged in the back on that tackle. And he got it to the 37-yard line. First down, Colorado. They've had it. The entire quarter so far. And Salam, this time a short game for Rashad. First hit, Giles and Baron Tanner, who helped clean up. Brad, when Colorado is able to run the ball inside on a football team, that really scares the defense because they've got four quick receivers on the line of scrimmage. Two tight ends right there ready to go out at any second, of course, the two wide outs. So when you can't commit another guy up there to stop the run, you're in trouble. Tom Hayes, the defensive coordinator, realizes that. Second down and seven. Ball at the Sooner 34-yard line. Cordell Stewart, play action, plenty of time, goes to his tight end again, who just got back in there, Matt Lepsis, and Matt got a couple yards before he's brought down. Let's go to Mike Tirico for an update. Mike? Brad in the Pac-10, Arizona leading 10-7, just trying to run out the clock at Washington State. Oswan Carter is stripped by Mark Fields, who recovers. Washington State runs a couple of plays. Tony Truen on to try a 44-yard field goal after a delay of game penalty. Wide left, and Desert Swarm slips the Palouse Noose by three. Ooh. Huge delay of game penalty, huh? Yeah. Well, Here's the first big why did, down. Why did they move the goalpost during the delay of game? <laughs> <laughs> At the 32, it's third and five. Tenth play of this opening march for the Buffalo. Stewart with plenty of time again. Loads it and goes. Incomplete, intended for Westbrook. He had a couple guys out there. Yeah, I don't know. I think he might have been throwing that to Fourier coming up the sideline, but Westbrook has such nice range, kind of goes for the ball, and you, you have to do that. You see him right there go to Christian, say, hey, I'm sorry, I thought that was for me. So it's going to bring out the field goal unit. That's a big stop for this Oklahoma football team early in this football game. Neil Voskaricci in his season long is 48. They're going to ask for a 49-yarder if he can hit it here. Anderson to hold. And it's no chance. Way left. And Oklahoma sees Colorado take it really down the field. Horses 
the field goal attempt at its wide. So that'll bring out the Sooner offense. Garrick McGee, their quarterback. He says, I'm not a true option man or a wishbone quarterback by any means. His stats are improving as a thrower, though. Alan Moore and Frazier join him in the bone when it's in there. P.J. Mills had the only touchdown last year against Colorado. Hall and Alexander join him. J.R. Conrad, two years ago a center, last year a left tackle, now a right tackle with Overton, Langston, Cavill, and Stamps. And the first play is Gerald Moore, the fullback that Gary talked about, who's going to be an important cog in this Sooner offense. Shannon Clavel leads this club in tackles for loss with Hicks and Holland up front. Ted Johnson leads the club in tackles. He's the man the wishbone will have to account for. Russell Jones and Phillips round out the linebacking core. And Donnell Leomides become a big play man in the secondary. The strong safety at an interception return for a touchdown last week. Rosga is the other safety. With Simmons and Hudson on the corners. And this time, Ted Johnson and company are there to make the play. Watson Brown told me one of the key changes for his offense in this game to run the fullback was to go wide splits. Look at the spacing in here between the Oklahoma offensive linemen. They want to spread that Colorado defense out and force the defenders to take a side and try to crease it with the fullback. They'll stay with the eye backfield now with two wide receivers. On a third down and five. McGee with pressure. Locks it out and too far out in front for P.J. Mills. And the Colorado defense came up big on the opening series. Two-man pass route. Plenty of protection. Both running backs to the left side. But Ted Johnson kind of reads the play from the inside and just shoots the gap. And that forced McGee to throw the ball before he really wanted to. But on the other hand, Brad, there really wasn't anybody open on that play. It was a good throwaway. Tim Daughtry now in as the punter for Oklahoma. Ten men up for Colorado. Trying to put a little pressure on him, and he kicks this one high and off the side of his foot. Take a decent bounce right near the sideline, but it'll be Colorado at their own 33 on offense when we come back. They're shorthanded. Colorado not shorthanded. Their opening drive marched it down the field. Missed a field goal. They've got it back, though, after a three and out by the Sooners. And with 8.59 to go, first quarter, first down, Buffalo on their own 33-yard line. On the option is Cordell Stewart. The pitch to Salam, it's loose. Scooped up by Ray Carruth, who slides out of bounds way back at the 25-yard line. The relationship between Salam and Cordell Stewart that time was too close. Stewart had to bow out a little bit, and you'll see that Salam was about three yards from him. He needs to be about four and a half yards. When he pitched out, it's surprised, and you can see it off his left shoulder of Salam. A bad pitch by Stewart, but I don't think he was quite sure of where Salam was for the pitch. So it forces a long yardage situation for the first time for Colorado. Second down and 18. <laughs> Off play action is Stewart. A man in his face as he completes it. Back near the 30-yard line to Lepsis, who's been his favorite receiver so far. Three catches for Lepsis. What that might mean, though, is nobody else is getting open. Well, I think what uh, you'll see Oklahoma do in this football game is take away the weapons from Cordell Stewart and make him throw to guys he's uncomfortable throwing the ball to. He likes to go to Westbrook. He likes to go to Fourier. He likes to go to Rashad Salam. So, just like in basketball, you make him go to this left hand. Yep. Colorado's doing a good job. I mean, Oklahoma, excuse me, is doing a good job of forcing Cordell Stewart to throw to people he's not used to throwing, and it's working so far. Cordell Stewart leading the big eight with that 65 percent. We're going to need all of that and then some here. Third down at 13, Colorado. Going to load it and air it for Westbrook. He's out there and he couldn't hold it, but a flag flies in. Darius Johnson may have bumped him right as the ball arrived. Well, Darius Johnson was riding his back on that play, when you have third and 14 for a secondary, you always are anticipating that receiver curling up for the first down. This time, Elliot Uzilak, the coordinator, said, we're just going to go long and test him. You'll see Michael Westbrook. They're going to try to bracket him inside out. 
but to the outside, Darius Johnson, number 42, Pass knows he's service. beat. On the defense, 15 yards, automatic first down. That is a good call. You'll see his right hand grab Westbrook's right hand. Westbrook almost comes up with an acrobatic catch, but actually it's a pretty good play by Johnson because he was beat, and in college football, it is only a 15-yard penalty instead of the point of the spot of the foul. What, is it, what it does give, though, is Colorado a first down at the 45-yard line. Westbrook involved in huge plays this year already, of course. The catch against Michigan. The catch preceding that one. And then the catch that set up the last second field goal to beat Texas. Play fake. Cordell Stewart went right by the outside linebacker and flipped it out to Fourier's other tight end. And Fourier's got another Colorado first down and a pickup of 11 as he's run out of bounds. And will run it out of bounds to Mike Tirico. Mike Brad, Southern Cal trying to get to three and one, second place alone in the pack, and Rob Johnson's out, Sean Walters is not. Turns the corner, gonna go the distance, 61 yards, the Trojans at the farm, lead Stanford by 14. Nice tightrope job down the sideline, no score here, 7.47 to go first quarter. Salam found an opening, a big one, he could score. Run down at the nine-yard line. Touchdown saving tackle by Anthony Fogel. But 36 yards for Rashad Salam. Did you see this guy accelerate when he saw the opening on that play? He had a crack and he was through it. You don't see many backs take a play like that and just gash it right here. Good blocking on the front side. Lepsis gets the down block. The guard comes around and fits on the inside linebacker, Freeman. Boom, there's the crack, and he's into the secondary track beat to the end zone. And Fogel, very fortunate, just a kind of hog time from behind her. That would have been a scoreboard changer. Wow. Got it all the way to the seven-yard line. First and goal, Colorado. Salam the other way. Inside for the touchdown. He got him close, and then he got him in. 6-0, Buffalo. Neil Voskaricci and in for the point after. Not many teams with as many weapons as Colorado is featuring in this year's version of their offense. Power and speed and throw the ball all out of the same backfield in the same formation. What a combination. Salam already with 67 yards on seven carries. Trying to get point number seven, Foster Ritchie, and we've got flags down on the play. Tom Ehlers, our referee. Dead ball. Illegal procedure, movement on the offensive line, five yards, repeat the untime down. So we'll have to try the extra point again. A very calm Bill McCartney, his team in front with our opening touchdown. Bill McCartney was expecting a very strong effort from, effort from this Oklahoma football team tonight. He told his players to prepare for it. Richie from five yards deeper still has the extra point up and good. Seven minutes and 34 seconds remaining in the first quarter. The number two rusher in the country is off to a great start. 7 0 Colorado. Well, Rashad Salam has found a way to slice up some defenses this year, and he did so on that last drive to score the touchdown. As you go into Buffs Deli, you're going to find that a Salam E sandwich. <laughs> we'll get you 184 and three against Northeast Louisiana. You slice it the next week. That's his worst game. Four touchdowns against Wisconsin, 85 on the ground. Then 141 and two against Michigan. He told us yesterday he's pretty proud of that one. Then came 317, the most Texas has ever allowed, and a touchdown. And against Missouri, 166 and two. Just a normal week tonight. 67 yards. Seven carries and a touchdown. Pretty good ingredients for the sandwich. And you don't need much else to go on that sandwich to make it work. You know, you just put the salami on, you're done. 
And there's no hot dog in him either. Oscar Ritchie in the kick. Mills and Frazier back deep. P.J. Mills from the five. Oh, he got swarmed under in a hurry. Down there was London Henry. And Oklahoma will start at about the 17-yard line. Oklahoma has not been happy all year long with their special teams. In particular, their kick return units. They have struggled. And it's been part of the reason they haven't scored any points so far this season in the first quarter. The second quarter is a different story, but they have not gotten off to a good start. Uh, but that's not a good sign playing against Colorado with a slow start. You and as you Colorado... said, that means you never lead in the first no, quarter. No, you can't lead when you don't <laughs> Garrett McGee, off play action, got some pressure, and he's in trouble. Got what he could, and it's not back to the line of scrimmage, though. Ted Johnson and Greg Jones, the linebackers, are coming in from the outside, and Clavel from the middle. One of, the, loss of one. one of the problems when you're trying to find a running game, which offensive coordinator Watson Brown is trying to find for Gary Gibbs, is that you try to do a lot of different things. They're running a little bit of bone, a little bit of eye, a little bit of pass offense from three wide receivers. Consequently, I don't know if you do any of them that well. And passing is the first to suffer. And Watson Brown has said maybe it's too much for his quarterback to absorb. They've tried to simplify it. There's a flag now as McGee goes down the 20-yard line. Mike Phillips with a tackle. But a penalty marker as the play began. We have a dead ball penalty. Illegal procedure on the offense. Five yards. Repeat second down. That doesn't help the cause at all either. Gary talked about those large line splits for the Sooners and Adrian has Colorado done anything about that defensively here's the situation about exactly what they're doing you're talking about the adjustments to the defensive line the gaps you'll see now Oklahoma at the line much wider gaps than the scout team actually showed Colorado this week what coach Hankowitz has done now has closed everybody down inside and getting great pressure on the quarterback as you can see right there everyone is shooting inside them exactly what happened and McGee had to throw a jump pass from the end zone incomplete if you notice all the great passing teams, either in college football or in the NFL, you'll see real tight line splits. It's tough to block a pass protection from an island. And really, each offensive lineman is on an island this time. A little bit of a screen pass, but Ted Johnson is all over that play. Throwing it to Allen, that was his man, and he was right in position. And Ted Johnson's been all over the field already in the first quarter. It is third down and 16. 6.36 remaining first quarter. McGee fires outside, completes it, but not even back to the original line of scrimmage with P.J. Mills. And it is three and out again for the Sooners. And now they're going to be putting near their own end zone. Talking to Colorado defensive coordinator Mike Hankowitz, he said, we are on the verge of being a great defensive football team. All we need is a little more consistency, and he thinks that he can be as good as any college Colorado defensive team he's ever coached here. Tim Daughtry made his first appearance in a Sooner uniform last week. I don't know if he likes his spot right now from his own one-yard line to punt, but he did get a nice high kick. Chris Hudson waits on it and waits on it and takes it. Gutsy move by Hudson. He's a great punt returner, though, and he's got a wall on the sideline. Chris Hudson lost the ball, but he's got it first and goal, Colorado. No, no. Oklahoma, got, Oklahoma it. got it before it went out of bounds. People who tell you when do turnovers occur. Most turnovers occur when the presence of a big play is happening for the offense. Chris Hudson runs a punt return as good as you can run one. But right as he's going in, stripped from behind, Colorado turns the ball over. And, and this is a dream turnover for Oklahoma. You'll see it. He thinks he's going in from the back side. I think it's Wendell Davis, the corner coming from the backside, gets the play, and the ball stays in bounds. A huge turnover for the Oklahoma football team, who looked to be a little bit snake bit. Tremendous recovery before it went out of bounds. The bad news for the Sooners, they work from inside their own five. They're still inside their own five. James Allen going nowhere. 
Russell made the tackle on Frazier. And Darius Holland doing a dance up front. Well, Darius Holland made the tackle that time, but uh, Frazier did not uh, really find the hole that time. He had it outside if he would have stayed with it. Defensive coordinator Mike Hankwitz. Gary talked about a couple of plays ago. Put together a pretty impressive defensive group. Terrence Brown is in at quarterback. He is the true option quarterback of the two for Oklahoma, but he's in a tough spot. Motion had appeared before the snap out of the wishbone. Penalty markers on the play. Looked like James Allen came out of his stance. Dead ball. False start on the offense. Half the distance to the goal. And he's stuck it down. And there's not too many half distance you can go as Watson Brown looks on. His troops will be at the two-yard line. Oklahoma's offense has not even come close to being comfortable in this football game. Let alone trying to make successful plays, their offense just looks so much out of sync and just snapping the ball. That's a huge problem. I don't know if the Colorado defense wasn't out there whether they'd be too successful right now. They are definitely out of sync. 5-0-1 to go, first quarter. Inside the two-yard line, second down and 12. From the bone, Moore the fullback, and he only got it to about the four and a half. What little opening there was closed in a hurry, and that'll be third down and about 11. Brad, I thought this was the second time in a row an Oklahoma running back had room to the outside. Look to see if there wasn't room to the outside and more just be a little bit more patient with it. To the outside, if he could have came, he had it inside the tackle and the other running back blocking there. He just kind of gave up on the play before he did it. Harry Stamps, his left tackle, was trying to block down for him and open an avenue as it is. Third down and a long 10, almost 11. With 420 left, first quarter. Brown, the quarterback, slips and goes down at the five. Matt Russell helped him slip. The inside linebacker. And now the punting situation becomes even more intense for Tim Daughtry because he's going to be backed up to his own end line. Yeah, and bad news is you got to give it back to Chris Hudson. Hudson had three great returns in the win over Wisconsin when we were here three weeks ago. Daughtry's got to get rid of it in a hurry and does. Hudson runs up on this one at the 44. Got around the first man and goes down at the 41-yard line. Gives us time to check in with Mike Tirico. Mike? Well, Brad, as those Heisman hopefuls of the Colorado offense take the field, chance to check what Aaron McNair did today. As Prairie View lost its 41st straight game, Steve McNair, 387 yards passing, 107 rushing, eight touchdowns. Some impressive numbers, five of those touchdowns through the air. McNair plays Southern. Alcorn State Southern on the deuce. Next Saturday at 1 Eastern. Back to Brad in Boulder. It's another day at the office <laughs> for Steve McNair. First down outside the 41. Nice tackle that time by Tyrell Peters. You put a hat on Salam. Very short gain, if any. What he did a nice job that time is dodging the offensive guard. He didn't take him on strong. He kind of gave him a little ole around the side. Guard comes out. He's going to miss the guard right there. Comes in and makes heads-up tackle on Salam. Chris Naole, number 65, kind of went low. Peter's just a little bit too quick for yeah. that type of block. Got to give the OU defense a little bit of credit for having to be out there the whole quarter. Been out there all but about nine snaps. Salam again broke through, found a first down. Rashawn goes inside the 30 to the 29. Roderick Simpson, you know the tackle, but Salam with 11 more yards. Brad, I think one of the great additions that Bill McCartney made to his staff was when he brought Elliot Uzelak, offensive coordinator, into this team. Worked with him at Michigan before, came in here. He's one of those guys, I don't know. You want me to take a shot? Looks like this guy here. Right over one more. There you go, the glasses. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Stewart trying to throw back to the other side, and Westbrook, they might have had two guys in the same area again at Fourier and Westbrook, incomplete. What I think Elliot Uzelak brought to this football team was toughness. Bill McCartney changed his offense from an option to a passing attack. But I think what Elliot did, here you go, Elliot, got you on TV. Now we can see your first base right there. But it came in with a little bit of more toughness from that offensive line. They're well balanced, but Brad, this is a team that runs the ball 48 times and passes at 24. 
the mainstay of their game is power on the offensive line. Second down and 10. That line comes up the 30-yard line. And now Oklahoma getting tough on Salam. Peters again in there, along with Sterling Lucky, the outside linebacker, to make the hit. Yeah, I, I think you've got to give a lot of credit to the Oklahoma defense because uh, they have hung in this football game. Peters and Freeman have been making a lot of stops. Just that one big crease by Salam has been the only big play they've given up. There you see Tom Hayes, defensive coordinator. He's in his fourth year here this year, and he said, Gary, we don't stop from running the ball inside. Don't show a lot of shots in this place. <laughs> well, his team's trying to hang in on a third down and nine against a very explosive offensive group in Colorado. Fourier, the tight end, in motion. Both receivers to the left. Westbrook wanted to go that way, and now he's pressured. He comes out of there with it. Stewart dives down. He might have gotten a first down at the 19-yard line. I think he did. There's the other dimension, Garrett. Well, he's averaging 63 yards rushing per game. But he doesn't really want to be known as a scrambling quarterback. Well, it's tough. You'll see number 56, Lucky, come in from the inside. Doesn't make the play. Once Cordell Stewart breaks your containment, he's out to the safeties. Henderson and Fulton will make the tackle, but not before Stewart picks up a first down. That, that is so ner unnerving for a defensive coordinator when you have a good coverage and he breaks containment makes the first down. 6'3", 210. We talked about the top percentage in the conference, and he runs 4 3 five. This guy is pretty fast, too. Salam put his hat down on Darius Johnson, won the battle momentarily. And he's readjusting the chin strap because he's got it down very close to another first down for Colorado. Ryan Stolenberg, the junior center, does a good job this time reaching to his side and handling the nose tackle by himself. You'll see he blocks Fred Lewis and allows Salam to crease it right up the gut. When you can block the nose tackle with the center, you're going to have a good chance of running the ball between the tackles. Great inside of 20 is Colorado, as you saw the numbers. We're under a minute. They've got second down and less than a yard. Salam. First down, Colorado. First and goal. Cedric Jones on the stop. Salam closing in on a... 100 yards already in quarter number one. Salam will take himself out of the game when he gets tired, but it, it, it's not likely he's going to get real tired. Against Texas, he ran for 317 <laughs> yards, and it was 110 degrees. Now, it's nice out here, but it's not 110 degrees. First and goal, Colorado. Last time they had it at the seven, Salam took it in from seven. Leon Merritt. Now the up man in an eye formation. Salam behind his blockers. Touchdown. The second time tonight. And Rashad Salam just keeps rolling those sevens. His seventh yard touchdown for the second time this evening. One of the few formation changes that Colorado gives you is when they get inside the 7-8 yard line, they bring in a blocking back and uh, still two tight ends, but they still give it to number 19. Oscar Ritchie in for the point after. Right down the middle. It's a Rashad Salam kind of night so far. Two touchdowns in the first quarter and 19 seconds left. Well, that's what they'd like to see happen at the end of this season. And Colorado off to a great start against another top 25 club. Brad, you called it. Leon Merritt is the guy going to block. He's just outside the screener. He's going to come inside and fit on this linebacker. That's what makes the play go. Here he comes, Leon Merritt. He's 240-pound freshman. Fit on the inside linebacker. There's the crease. Salam has the patience to stay with the play. Coming from the other angle, you want to play safety on this one. Naoli comes in, takes one guy. Freeman gets blocked by Merritt. A walk-in. As you said, playing off the blocks and waiting for that block. The patience of Salam helped him score to cap the 41-yard drive. Gary had that same patience earlier on that long run. He yes. kind of waited, waited, and then another gear. Yeah, and that's really what the great backs have. I, I think that uh, if there's something that Eric Dickerson had, and is he was able to glide into 
into the into the hole and then explode through the hole. And, and Slav, it's something you really can't teach. Slav has enough confidence in his speed that he can take it to that next gear. Muster Inge in the kick. And already Oklahoma in a little bit of trouble because their offense has been able to muster nothing so far in the first quarter. Mills camps under this at the eight. P.J., a hurdle job to get to the 19, and a flag flies in. Uh, Brad, again, no patience for the play. That was supposed to be a wedge block. He didn't give it time, went to the outside, and really did not give the play a chance to pop. In Norman, they've been calling the not-so-special teams on kick returns. It has not helped their cause or their field position throughout the year. Well, when you do this, you take the blocking angles away from your guy, and you cause penalties, and that's exactly what happened here. And now the holding call is going to take them into worst territory inside the 10-yard line. So far, Oklahoma, nine plays, 11 yards. Ouch. Holding on the receiving team, half the distance, first down. Grant, there is some good news for Oklahoma, though. The first quarter will end in 14 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> Which is one or two plays. Eric McGee back in at quarterback. 14-0 with 14 left, first quarter. They'll come out with a two-wide out set. And the eye back to it. On the option, pitch to Allen. And Allen gets some positive yards. James got it up near the 15-yard line, picked up almost five. And that will bring quarter number one to a close. Penalty marker on the play with three seconds left. And it is another holding call against the Sooners. Brother, half the distance, and now they're going to be huddling down in their own end zone again. Five penalties already in the first quarter against Oklahoma. It was on one of the inside linemen that forced actually Force McGee wide. Couldn't exactly tell you who it was. Cavell or Stamps was holding inside. I think it was Ben Cavell for the, the left guard. But uh, penetration by the Colorado line, those big splits. Colorado and Mike Hagewood, the defense quarter, has made the adjustment. They're shooting the gaps. Oklahoma won't get this playoff. The quarter will come to an end after they come to the line. Again, though, out of sync. You should know the quarter's going to end. Let's go regroup and start the next quarter. Well, they've got a couple minutes to work on it on the sideline. End of one at Folsom Field. The Colorado Buffaloes lead by 14. Schleg locks. The Doberman of locks. With Gary Danielson and Adrian Carson, I'm Brad Nessler at Folsom Field, where Colorado leads by 14 to start the second quarter. How bad was it for the Sooners in the first quarter? That'll tell you. Not often, Brad, you're behind 14 up in the first quarter, and the game's not as close as the score indicates. <laughs> McGee to throw from his own end zone. Incomplete. Got it out to Mills, who couldn't hold it. Well, that was a well-thrown ball. In, in a game like this, when you're trying to come out of your own end zone, someone is going to have to make a play for this Colorado football team. McGee put the ball in a catchable position. Mills has to come up with it. Derek McGee had a bad game against Texas A&M, but his statistics have improved weekly since. He had almost 200 yards throwing last week and a career-high 57 rushing in the loss to Texas. Watson Brown admitted that uh, with so many formations, he had to try to simplify things, not just for McGee, but for the rest of the team as well. Not too simple, though, in a second down and 18 near your own end zone. Flags fly before the snap. Well, finally, something's good happened for this football team. They drew Hicks off. Looked like he touched the center. Dead ball. The coachman on the defense. Five yards. Big second down. Gives him just a little bit more room to work. They'll spot it out inside the seven-yard line. Again, Brad, 
Oklahoma needs to establish the fullback, and I'd love to see Gerald Moore just take that ball to the fullback and just gash it in there and say, a hole's going to be there. Don't look for it. Well, he's the up man in the eye, but they're going to throw again. Wide opens the tight end. And a first down, Oklahoma. Yeah. Finally, they got something to go positively, and it's Steven Alexander, their freshman. Yeah, when everything goes bad, go to your freshman. Yeah. <laughs> this guy's going to be something special, oh, I think. Six foot eight inch high jumper in high school. He's only about 220 pounds now, but they fake the tailbacks. Both backers step up. There's Alexander in the slot. Nice throw by McGee. And this guy will be an All-American before he leaves Oklahoma. And his first catch against Iowa State. Then he caught four for 50 yards last week. An 18-yarder there as the Sooners work it. First down at the 24. Their first first down. Did his knee go down? Yes. I believe so. This play worked against Colorado once last year out of the four times they ran it. I think it's a good-looking play, but you've got to keep your footing, and the pitch has to be perfect. It's a slow developing, but it was a, going to be a counter play, a misdirection counter play coming back the other way. You'll see it. He catches the ball, and Allen goes down on a slip right there. And, you know, Oklahoma plays on AstroTurf, and uh, this is nothing new here. It seemed like good footing when I was down there before the game. Just tried to start too fast. Second down at 16 now after picking up a first down. It goes six yards in the negative category. Split backfield now on second down and long for McGee. With time and now running out of it. Maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe. Pile up as the ball loose. Maybe Colorado the says ball. they have it. Yeah. They do. Matt Russell. You know, Brad, when we were here watching Wisconsin get pasted by this football team, you really had the feeling that Wisconsin was having success moving the ball. They just were beating themselves. For Oklahoma in this game, they're not having any success moving it. You can see, it's stripped from behind that time by Shannon Clavel. The ball's loose. That was a good call, and McGee turns it over on a play where he didn't have anybody to throw the ball to. He was just trying to get something out of nothing. Matt Russell with a big play. Second team freshman All-American last year with the turnover, and it sets Colorado up at the Sooner 18-yard line. Remember what we talked about when they're inside the 20. They're tough. Stewart, though, is going to go down for a loss. Tyrell Peters. And you can see why he leads the club in tackles. He's all over the field so far, working hard. And Cordell Stewart gives him a pat on the hat. Well, I don't think you can fault this Oklahoma defense. I mean, they've played well. Not, there's not a lot of people that are going to slow down the Colorado offense. Oklahoma just has to do a couple first downs at least and gain some calmness on their offensive football team. Freeman and Peters are playing outstanding football games. Westbrook. James Kidd, the wideouts. Second down along 11. Salam, though, inside, and Rashad Salam slices his way inside the 10-yard line. He's going to be close to a first down. That time he broke right behind Martin Chase, number 93, the nose tackle. What great vision he has from the tailback position. He's awful deep in this situation. Here's the tailback. Watch him break behind the, the nose tackle, which all great tailbacks do in this play. Chase is there. He's got the tackle. Boom. Cutback block. That play could have run anywhere from the left tight end all the way to behind the nose tackle. That's the type of running that Salam has. Great vision from a tailback position. 111 yards, and I think that's going to put him over 1,000 for the season. And remember, we are in week six. There's what he's done. This is first half statistics. 111, almost eight yards a carry, and two touchdowns. Yeah, he, he's on a pretty good pace now. He's up there with some big names when he's going for 2,000 yards. Well, that's the kind of pace he's on now that he's got 1,004 on the season. He's going to get maybe back to the line of scrimmage this time. Martin Chase. Gary said if you put the season together for Rashad Salam, where would he end up? How about with this group? <laughs> Sanders, Allen, Rozier, LaShawn Johnson last year, Tony Dorsett. Tony Dorsett at the time. Well, and now that 2162 would be pretty strong. Wouldn't now, it? I hate to say it, but there's four Heisman trophies sitting on that page <laughs> right there, right. and, and, and possibly a fifth. And, you know, if uh, Cordell Stewart isn't on this team, kind of taking some of the votes, you might see Rashawn Salam heading up as maybe the leading contender for the trophy. I don't really think he cares less about it. I think he does either. Second and goal at the seven. That's oh. been the magic number if they give it to Salam. 
from the seven. He's got it again. And Rashawn just keeps rolling those sevens. Right now, you saw Gary Gibbs. He's got to get his football team back. Just a little bit of confidence right now. They could go south in a hurry. Another isolation play right up the middle. This time, Keith Miller, number 37, is the fullback. Salam sees the hole. Boom. Into the hole and out of the hole. As good as anyone I've ever seen run from tailback. Takes a hit in the face, but holds on to it. Oscar Ritchie, the point after. A long night for the Sooners so far. 11.53 to the half. Salam with three touchdowns already. ESPN's presentation of CFA College Football is brought to you by Oldsmobile and your local Oldsmobile retailers. And by the American Express card. Don't leave home without it. They have had plenty of reason to cheer so far at Folsom Field. 21 to nothing, Colorado. 11.53 to go first half. Haven't we done this already once, Brad? I think we did it earlier this year, didn't we? <laughs> the team was in red, too. <laughs> Taking a yard deep, a little indecision. Mills brings it out. He broke through the pack. P.J. Mills. Knocked out by Oscar Ritchian, or he might have been off to the races 102 yards. He got out to the 34-yard line. Well, finally, something is good for this happened for this offense where they can start to run some of the plays. And a little bit of room out near the 34 for the Sooner offense. Probably have about 30% more offense you can run from the 30-yard line than you can from That's the 10-yard right. line. Garrett McGee late yeah. to come from you the sideline. you got to have a quarterback. <laughs> Garrett McGee trots on now. James Allen will trot out. That'll leave Jeff Frazier as the eye back behind Gerald Moore who gets the call. Moore out. That's more like it. running for the hole and just anticipating that hole to be out there one one hole wider. He was given up on the play. That's what needs to be established for this Oklahoma offense to work tonight. More 106 yards against Texas Tech. His best game this year as you look at his seasonal numbers. And he and James Allen came in virtually identical in the stat category. Moore is a fullback, but he's got tailback track speed. Field position's been all Colorado, so is the scoreboard. And here comes Frazier. He's the guy with maybe the most speed in that backfield. The Jeff's got a first down for the Sooners out at the 46-yard line. Well, Jeff Frazier got hurt a year ago. People who follow Sooner football know. Kind of opened the door for James Allen, but he's back and healthy this year, and that's what really prompted. Peters again in there, along with Sterling Lucky, the outside linebacker, to make the hit. Yeah, I, I think you've got to give a lot of credit to the Oklahoma defense because uh, they have hung in this football game. Peters and Freeman have been making a lot of stops. Just that one big crease by Salam has been the only big play they've given up. There you see Tom Hayes, defensive coordinator. He's in his fourth year here this year, and he said, Gary, we don't stop from running the ball inside. Don't show a lot of shots at me, please. <laughs> Well, his team's trying to hang in on a third down and nine against a very explosive offensive group in Colorado. Fourier, the tight end, in motion. Both receivers to the left. Westbrook wanted to go that way, and now he's pressured. He comes out of there with it. Stewart dives down. He might have gotten a first down at the 19-yard line. I think he did. There's the other dimension, Garrett. Well, he's averaging 63 yards rushing per game. But he doesn't really want to be known as a scrambling quarterback. Well, it's tough. You'll see number 56, Lucky, come in from the inside. Doesn't make the play. Once Cordell Stewart breaks your containment, he's out to the safeties. Henderson and Folt will make the tackle, but not before Stewart picks up a first down. That, that is so ner unnerving for a defensive coordinator when you have a good coverage and he breaks containment and makes a first down. 6'3", 2'10". We talked about the top percentage in the conference, and he runs 4'3", 5". This guy is pretty fast, too. Salam put his hat down on Darius Johnson, won the battle momentarily. And he's readjusting the chin strap because he's got it down very close to another first down for Colorado. 
Ryan Stolenberg, the junior center, does a good job this time reaching to his side and handling the nose tackle by himself. You'll see he blocks Fred Lewis and allows Salam to crease it right up the gut. When you can block the nose tackle with the center, you're going to have a good chance of running the ball between the tackles. Great inside the 20, you Colorado, as you saw the numbers. We're under a minute. They've got second down and less than a yard. Salam. First down, Colorado. First and goal. Cedric Jones on the stop. Salam closing in on a hundred yards already in quarter number one. Salam will take himself out of the game when he gets tired, but it, it, it's not likely he's going to get real tired. Against Texas, he ran for 317 yards, and it was 110 degrees. Now, it's nice out here, but it's not 110 degrees. First and goal, Colorado. Last time they had it at the seven, Salam took it in from seven. Leon Merritt. Now the up man in an eye formation. Salam behind his blockers. Touchdown. The second time tonight. Sean Salam just keeps rolling those sevens. His seven-yard touchdown for the second time this evening. One of the few formation changes that Colorado gives you is when they get inside the seven, eight-yard line, they bring in a blocking back and uh, still two tight ends, but they still give it to number 19. Oscar Ichian for the point after. Right down the middle. It's a Rashad Salam kind of night so far. Two touchdowns in the first quarter and 19 seconds left. Well, that's what they'd like to see happen at the end of this season. And Colorado off to a great start against another top 25 club. Brad, you called it. Leon Merritt is the guy going to block. He's just outside the screener. He's going to come inside and fit on this linebacker. That's what makes the play go. Here he comes, Leon Merritt. He's 240-pound freshman. Fit on the inside linebacker. There's the crease. Salam has the patience to stay with the play. Coming from the other angle, you want to play safety on this one. Naoli comes in, takes one guy. Freeman gets blocked by Merritt. A walk-in. As you said, playing off the blocks and waiting for that block. The patience of Salam helped him score to cap the 41-yard drive. Gary had that same patience earlier on that long run. He yes. kind of waited, waited, and then another gear. Yeah, and that's really what the great backs have. I, I think that uh, if there's something that Eric Dickerson had, and is he was able to glide into the into the hole and then explode through the hole. And, and Salam, it's something you really can't teach. Salam has enough confidence in his speed that he can take it to that next gear. Oscar Ritchie in the kick. Already Oklahoma in a little bit of trouble because their offense has been able to muster nothing so far in the first quarter. Mills camps under this at the 8. P.J., a hurdle job to get to the 19, and a flag flies in. Uh, Brad, again, no patience for the play. That was supposed to be a wedge block. He didn't give it time, went to the outside, and really did not give the play a chance to pop. In Norman, they've been calling the not-so-special teams on kick returns. It has not helped their cause or their field position throughout the year. Well, when you do this, you take the blocking angles away from your guy, and you cause penalties, and that's exactly what happened here. And now the holding call is going to take them into worse territory inside the 10-yard line. So far, Oklahoma, nine plays, 11 yards. Ouch. Holding on the receiving team. Distance, first down. Brad, there is some good news for Oklahoma, though. The first quarter will end in 14 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> Which is one or two plays. Eric McGee back in at quarterback. 14-0 with 14 left, first quarter. They'll come out with a two wide out set. And the eye back to it. On the option, pitch to Allen. Allen gets some positive yards. James got it up near the 15-yard line, picked up almost five. And that will bring quarter number one to a close. Penalty marker on the play with three seconds left. And it is another holding call against the Sooners. Brother, half the distance, 
And now they're going to be huddling down in their own end zone again. Five penalties already in the first quarter against Oklahoma. It was on one of the inside linemen that forced actually forced McGee wide. Couldn't exactly tell you who it was. Cavell or Stamps was holding inside. I think it was Ben Cavell for the, the left guard, but uh, penetration by the Colorado line, those big splits. Colorado and Mike Hagenwitz, the defense quarter, has made the adjustment. They're shooting the gaps. Oklahoma won't get this playoff. The quarter will come to an end after they come to the line. Again, though, out of sync. You should know the quarter's going to end. Let's go regroup and start the next quarter. Well, they've got a couple minutes to work on it on the sideline. End of one at Folsom Field. The Colorado Buffaloes lead by 14. Or you can put in Schlage locks. The Doberman of locks. With Gary Daniels, Phil and Adrian Carson, I'm Brad Nessler at Folsom Field, where Colorado leads by 14 to start the second quarter. How bad was it for the Sooners in the first quarter? That'll tell you. Not often, Brad, you're behind 14 up in the first quarter, and the game's not as close as the score indicates. <laughs> McGee to throw from his own end zone. Incomplete. Got it out to Mills, who couldn't hold it. Well, that was a well-thrown ball. In, in a game like this, when you're trying to come out of your own end zone, someone is going to have to make a play for this Colorado football team. McGee put the ball in a catchable position. Mills has to come up with it. Jarek McGee had a bad game against Texas A&M, but his statistics have improved weekly since. He had almost 200 yards throwing last week and a career-high 57 rushing in the loss to Texas. And Watson Brown admitted that uh, with so many formations, he had to try to simplify things, not just for McGee, but for the rest of the team as well. Not too simple, though, in a second down and 18 near your own end zone. Flags fly before the snap. Well, finally, something's good happened for this football team. They drew Hicks off. Looked like he touched the center. Dead ball. The coachman on the defense. Five yards. Big second down. Gives him just a little bit more room to work. They'll spot it out inside the seven-yard line. Again, Brad, Oklahoma needs to establish the fullback. And I'd love to see Gerald Moore just take that ball to the fullback and just gash it in there and say, a hole's going to be there. Don't look for it. Well, he's the up man in the eye, but they're going to throw again. Wide opens the tight end. And a first down, Oklahoma. Yeah. Finally, they got something to go positively, and it's Stephen Alexander, their freshman. Yeah, when everything goes bad, go to your freshman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's going to be something special, oh, I think. Six foot, eight inch high jumper in high school. He's only about 220 pounds now, but they fake to the tailbacks. Both backers step up. There's Alexander in the slot. Nice throw by McGee, and this guy will be an All American before he leaves Oklahoma. At his first catch against Iowa State, then he caught four for 50 yards last week. An 18 yarder there as the Sooners work it. First down at the 24. Their first first down. Did his knee go down? Yes. I believe so. This play worked against Colorado once last year out of the four times they ran it. I think it's a good looking play, but you've got to keep your footing and the pitch has to be perfect. It's a slow developing, but it was a, going to be a counter play, a misdirection counter play coming back the other way. You'll see it. He catches the ball, and Allen goes down on a slip right there. And, you know, Oklahoma plays on AstroTurf, and uh, this is nothing new here. It seemed like good footing when I was down there before the game. Just tried to start too fast. Second down at 16 now after picking up a first down. It goes six yards in the negative category. Split backfield now on second down and long for McGee. With time, and now running out of it. Maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe. Pile up is the ball loose. Maybe Colorado the says ball. they have it. Yeah. They do. Matt Russell. You know, Brad, when we were here watching.
watching Wisconsin get pasted by this football team, you really had the feeling that Wisconsin was having success moving the ball. They just were beating themselves. For Oklahoma in this game, they're not having any success moving it. You can see, gets stripped from behind that time by Shannon Clavell. The ball's loose. That was a good call, and McGee turns it over on a play where he didn't have anybody to throw the ball to. He was just trying to get something out of nothing. Matt Russell with a big play. Second team freshman All-American last year with the turnover, and it sets Colorado up at the Sooner 18-yard line. Remember what we talked about when they're inside the 20. They're tough. Stewart, though, is going to go down for a loss. Tyrell Peters. And you can see why he leads the club in tackles. He's all over the field so far, working hard. And Cordell Stewart gives him a pat on the hat. Well, I don't think you can fault this Oklahoma defense. I mean, they've played well. Not, there's not a lot of people that are going to slow down the Colorado offense. Oklahoma just has to do a couple first downs at least and gain some calmness on their offensive football team. Freeman and Peters are playing outstanding football games. Westbrook. James Kidd, the wideouts. Second down along 11. Salam, though, inside, and Rashad Salam slices his way inside the 10-yard line. He's going to be close to a first down. That time he broke right behind Martin Chase, number 93, the nose tackle. What great vision he has from the tailback position. He's awful deep in this situation. Here's the tailback. Watch him break behind the, the nose tackle, which all great tailbacks do in this play. Chase is there. He's got the tackle. Boom. Cut back block. That play could have run anywhere from the left tight end all the way to behind the nose tackle. That's the type of running that Salam has. Great vision from a tailback position. 111 yards, and I think that's going to put him over 1,000 for the season. And remember, we are in week six. There's what he's done. This is first half statistics. 111, almost eight yards a carry, and two touchdowns. Yeah, he, he's on a pretty good pace now. He's up there with some big names when he's going for 2,000 yards. Well, that's the kind of pace he's on now that he's got 1,004 on the season. He's going to get maybe back to the line of scrimmage this time. Martin Chase. Gary said if you put the season together for Rashad Salam, where would he end up? How about with this group? <laughs> Sanders, Allen, Rozier, LaShawn Johnson last year, Tony Dorsett. Tony Dorsett at the time. Well, and now that 2162 would be pretty strong. Now, I hate to say it, but there's four Heisman trophies sitting on that page <laughs> right, right there and, and, and possibly a fifth. And, you know, if uh, Cordell Stewart isn't on this team kind of taking some of the votes, you might see Rashawn Salam heading up as maybe the leading contender for the trophy. I don't really think he cares less about it. I think he does either. Second and goal at the seven. That's oh. been the magic number if they give it to Salam from the seven. He's got it again. John just keeps rolling those sevens. Right now, you saw Gary Gibbs. He's got to get his football team back. Just a little bit of confidence right now. They could go south in a hurry. Another isolation play right up the middle. This time, Keith Miller, number 37, is the fullback. Salam sees the hole, boom, into the hole and out of the hole. As good as anyone I've ever seen run from tailback. Takes a hit in the face, but holds on to it. Oscar Ritchie, the point after. A long night for the Sooners so far. 11.53 to the half. Salam with three touchdowns already. ESPN's presentation of CFA College Football is brought to you by Oldsmobile and your local Oldsmobile retailers. And by the American Express card. Don't leave home without it. Plenty of reason to cheer so far at Folsom Field. 21 to nothing, Colorado. 11.53 to go, first half. Haven't we done this already once, Brad? I think we did it earlier this year, didn't we? <laughs> the team was in red, too. <laughs> Oscar Ritchie. Taking a yard deep, a little indecision. Mills brings it out. He broke through the pack. P.J. Mills. Knocked out by Oscar Ritchie, or he might have been off to the races 102 yards. He got out to the 34-yard line. Well, finally, something is good for this happen for this offense where they can start to run some of the plays. And a little bit of room out near the 34 for the Sooner offense. 
probably have about 30% more offense you can run from the 30-yard line than you can from That's the 10-yard right. line. Garrett McGee late yeah. to come from you the sideline. you got to have a quarterback. <laughs> Garrett McGee trots on now. James Allen will trot out. That'll leave Jeff Frazier as the eye back behind Gerald Moore, who gets the call. Moore out. That's more like it. Running for the hole and just anticipating that hole to be out there one one hole wider. He was giving up on the play. That's what needs to be established for this Oklahoma offense to work tonight. Moore, 106 yards against Texas Tech. His best game this year as you look at his seasonal numbers. And he and James Allen came in virtually identical in the stat category. Moore is a fullback, but he's got tailback type speed. Field position's been all Colorado, so is the scoreboard. And here comes Frazier. He's the guy with maybe the most speed in that backfield. And Jeff's got a first down for the Sooners out at the 46-yard line. Well, Jeff Frazier got hurt a year ago. People who follow Sooner football know. Kind of opened the door for James Allen, but he's back and healthy this year. And that's what really prompted I've ever had. He coached a guy named Jumbo Elliott, pretty good offensive lineman in Michigan. He said, this guy is the best I've ever worked with. The Can't penalty. Run. 6'4", 280 pounds, you can run. Penalty puts it back at the 16-yard line. Second down, 14. We're down to three minutes and a half. Westbrook in motion. Here's a little delay draw to Salam. And Rashawn Salam got it back to the original line of scrimmage near the 20-yard line. Pretty special lady watching Salam in the stands tonight. I think Adrian's got more on that. Brad, I'm with Kalata Salam. First time you've ever been to Colorado to see your son play. See my son play. I brought him to school here, and that was it. That was two years ago. You obviously brought the good luck charms tonight. I hope so. I hope so. You actually started and opened the own, uh, your own high school for your no. son, along with some other uh, mothers and student athletes in San Diego. No, it was an elementary school. My husband Hakeem and I opened up from uh, kindergarten to the sixth grade, the community preparatory school in San Diego, California. You must be an awfully proud mother. Who's this to our left? Uh, this is his brother, Jabali Alaji. You got the same kind of wheels as your brother does? Uh, no, I don't know. <laughs> right, he's already wearing the Colorado Buffalo cap. Have a great time. Thank you very much. All right. Rashan Salam, whose full name is Rashan Ayman Salam, meaning righteous, faith, and peace. There hasn't been a lot of peace out there if you're an Oklahoma Sooner trying to bring him down tonight. Wasn't he impressive to talk to, though? He I mean, sure his, was. His answers just came out so truthful and honest about uh, why he wanted to ask him about the Heisman. He, he I didn't really care about it. hadn't even thought about it. You could tell he hadn't thought about it. He's going to have to think about it. He's in the hump. Over two minutes. Third down, 15. From the 15. Play action. Cordell Stewart, plenty of time to throw. Comes back. Westbrook, the intended receiver, and broken up by Tim Denton. Boy, I tell you, Tim Denton was all over his back that time. The Colorado bench came out, but Tim Denton was in position to make the play, and he got away with one there. Looked like his left hand was on Westbrook's back when Cordell Stewart came to the backside. You'll see his left hand around the waist, and that's really what caused the interference call, or non-call, or at least the reaction from the Colorado bench. They did have a little dozy doe going on <laughs> out there. Here's Andy Mitchell, finally, gets a chance to try to warm up his hands and his leg. And the Sooners with 10 men up. And they might get to it very close to blocking that punt. And now Mills makes it a risky play. Penalty markers down as well. Seems like every time we have a punt return, we have a flag on the play. Boy, Oklahoma is very fortunate to get this ball back. Ten-man rush, and Mills does not call a fair catch with eight guys staring at him right in the face. No coordination in the special teams play between Mills and the call of a block. Interference with an opportunity to catch the ball. He says, who was it? Was it on you? As he points at Russell. You'll see what Mills does is kind of misjudge the ball. Number 46, Johnson is the guy that's too close. you got to give him a yard. Mills should have called a fair catch, though. He's very fortunate to get away with that one. And Ted was pretty close. Mills misplayed it, but it again, came guys up trying, okay for him. Brad, guys trying to make big plays out of nothing again. McGee fumbles the snap and gets back for maybe a loss of a foot. 
you can't question the desire that the Oklahoma football players are putting in this game that to try to win it and please their fans and take some of the pressure off their head coach but when you try a little bit too hard sometimes you try to do things that you're just not capable of doing they're going to take one of their timeouts with 123 remaining in the half we'll take a break as well and we'll see if the suitors can get on the board when we come back they trail by 28 a minute 23 seconds remaining in the half all Colorado in this big eight matchup tonight Folsom Field in Boulder Derek McGee trying to get the suitors on the board before the break which is 123 away second down and 10 Derek fires the sideline it's intercepted picked off by Steve Rosga Steve Rosga, Colorado coming with the blitz, was man-to-man -man coverage. This was a zone route. The back going down the flat and coming up the sideline. Rosga plays it perfectly. Suckered McGee into the throw that time, going to Allen out of the backfield and just playing perfect center field as the safety. Rosga comes in and makes the play. He had the big interception against Wisconsin also in that football game. And now Oklahoma, uh, Colorado has a chance to go into two-minute offense. Salam covers both arms around the ball. He bangs in there for a couple. And we're approaching a minute. The last three passes Garrick McGee has thrown have been intercepted by Leomini, Hudson, and then Rosga. It appears that Colorado is going to sit on the 28 to nothing lead and not push it. I can guarantee you if this game was closer than four touchdowns right now, they would be pushing that ball towards the end zone. and Michael Westbrook are the wide out to each side. The clock continues to wind down. Second down and nine. Salam. It'll be a holding call. I think a flag flies in as Rakan slides out to the 36-yard line. And that it is. It's a 14 penalty in the game tonight. Seven each way. Our halftime just 35 seconds away, and that's when we'll get our GMAC halftime report. Auburn and Florida, what a game that was. Who's number one? Well, everybody moves up a notch. And Steve McNair, another big day on the ground, in the air. And what a big first half. The Colorado Buffaloes, who are going to move up in the polls. How far? We won't know till Monday, but of course they've got a half left. But this half has belonged to them against the Oklahoma Sooners. Stewart pitches to Salam. He's knocked out of bounds with nine seconds left. Cordell Stewart got tattooed that time again by Tyrell Peters. And that gets a little old, running that option. <laughs> Getting hit by those inside backers like that. ran that at Purdue, didn't you? Yes, I did, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> it led to an 0-3 start. That's, what we did That's why it. your arms aren't the it's same right. length. <laughs> <laughs> you ever get, get hit by those inside linebackers, you get hit pointers. You rather get hit by Lawrence Taylor throwing the ball than get hit on the option. You know what's great is the coaches say, you don't get hit any harder on the option. All right. I'll let you try it, Coach. Third down, 14. Sean Salam, as he has done so many times tonight, carries for positive yardage and carries this to halftime. Oh, the Buffaloes have been impressive, and so has number 19. A four-touchdown, 100-plus first half for Rashawn Salam. And at the break, the fourth-ranked Colorado Buffaloes making a statement to the National Pollsters, leading number 22, Oklahoma, 28 to nothing as we send it back to the studios in Mike Tirico. Mike? This halftime report is presented by GMAC. Let's get you up to date on a game going on right now. Don Shanklin, who is quarterbacking Oregon State on the option to J.J. Young, a 15-yard score. Shanklin got him down there with a 72-yard run. The quarterback is in for Tim Alexander, who's out with a broken left clavicle. Two teams that are 0-3 in the Pac-10, and right now UCLA may go 0-4. 
As we get going on the GMAC Halftime Report, last year they were both 5-0 and coming into their matchup. We're talking about Auburn and Florida. And what happened? Auburn, in a game in the 30s, handed Florida their first loss of the season. Would history repeat itself just a year later? Danny Werfel came in for Terry Dean in this game. In the fourth quarter, his team down for only a second more. Jack Jackson, a 28-yard score, and the Gators lead 33-29. But on their next possession, unable to run out the clock, third and 15, Spurrier decides to put it up. Werfel is intercepted by Brian Robinson. One of six Florida turnovers on the day. And after converting a fourth and 10, on first and goal, Patrick Nix against the blitz to Frankie Sanders. An eight-yard catch. It would prove to be the game-winning touchdown for Terry's Tigers. Terry Bowden, who told the ESPN radio that he called his dad at halftime. Well, Dad said, keep doing what you're doing. The Tigers did, and Auburn knocks off Florida for the second straight lead, second straight year. They've won 18 straight. They have the lead, obviously, in their division of the SEC. After the game, Brett Haber spoke with the victorious head coach. All right, Terry Bowden, your defense has lived by the big play all year. You had to step it up against Florida. You did that five interceptions. Tough to do at the Swamp. It's tough to do. I, that's unbelievable. I can't believe the effort we gave. All of our players, all of our fans. I'll see everybody at Tumor's Corner. Wait a second. Patrick Nick said this is your bowl game. You don't have one this year. Was that this big a game for you? It was our Super Bowl. If we were going to have a chance at a national championship, we were lucky enough that's to get the number one team. Everybody wanted them to be number one. There was no fluke today. We beat him fair enough. Spurrier criticized your schedule. Now you've beaten him twice. I guess he can't criticize it anymore. I, I, I don't know. He, he's, he's probably right. One last question. You beat the number one team in the country in their backyard. What does that do to Auburn's rating? It ought to be, make us number one if you ask me. Some of the difference, not only the six turnovers, but Auburn was able to move the ball on the ground. Nobody had done that on the Gators coming in to today. Is Auburn number one because they beat number one at their place? Or is Nebraska, which wins by 11? Beringer came in in the second half. Lawrence Phillips really carried the load. And the secondary was the story shutting down Chad May. In the Pac-10, Arizona-Washington State, the defensive battle, 10-7, 30 seconds left. Tony Truitt, the walk-on, had to kick from five yards farther back because of a delay of game penalty against Mike Price's team. 44-yard field goal to tie. Hanging out there to the left and no good. Washington State was in such good position because they forced a fumble. But Arizona survives gets the win in a game where the two teams combined for 50 yards rushing on 80 rushing attempts. Arizona survives, and they're the only unbeaten in the Pac-10. BYU, Notre Dame. Lou Holtz made eight changes in the starting lineup, but BYU controlled this game on the ground. Jamal Willis up and over the top for the touchdown. 21-14, Lavelle Edwards and his Cougars get an immense road non-conference victory. The Irish average just two and a half per carry on the ground and likely will be unranked for the first time since 1986. The big one in the big house, Penn State and Michigan. You see the time remaining, it was 24 all. Penn State had blown a 16-0 lead, but Kerry Collins goes back on third down, finds Bobby Engram for a 16-yard score. The Lions lead by seven. After Wheatley with a big carry gets it downfield, Amani Toomer is open and just, oh, maybe half a foot from what would have been a touchdown to get it closer. Then on third down, Bianca Patuka is stopped. It was third and inches. Now facing fourth and two. Collins is scrambling. He's looking for Mercury Hayes, who didn't come back to the quarterback. Brian Miller gets in the way. Michigan loses another close, tough game at the big house. Penn State is unbeaten. 6-0 overall. 3-0 in the conference. Wheatley at 144. But Carter and company get the win. And we get it back out to a squared and rejoin Chris Fowler. This halftime report is presented by GMAC Financial Services, the expressway home. 2-0 in the conference, Colorado would be if they can hang on through the second half. They're up 28. Nebraska's also 2-0 in the Big 8. Big 8 teams looking for their first win today and getting them Kansas over Iowa State, which now owns along with Akron, the nation's longest 1A losing streak, and Missouri gets Larry Smith's first Big 8 conference win as coach of the Titans. Alabama-Tennessee, the third Saturday in October, can really be described of late in two words, roll tide. Alabama it keeps just beating Tennessee. The last Vols win 85 in this series, and it was Sherman Williams night. 13-10 the score in the fourth. Williams scores from six yards out. He had 142 yards rushing. Tennessee drives it down the field. The freshman Peyton Manning can't hit Nilo Sylvan on fourth down. 
And Alabama is 7-0, 4-0 in the SEC behind the Williams carrying it on the ground and three Tennessee turnovers, including a key fumble by Stewart inside the five in the first half. In the Big Ten, Purdue ties Wisconsin. Purdue now alone in sole possession of second place in the Big Ten. Duke remains unbeaten in the ACC. They still have to play Florida State in a couple of weeks. They're now 6-0, a block punt, the difference in this game in the fourth quarter. Lee mentioned all the teams on probation, just one loss. Well, A&M still hasn't lost. The Battle of the Brazos against Baylor today, the seventh-ranked Aggies. Mixed up the game, great. Corey Pulling, the play fake to senior Chris Sanders, 75 yards. Into the end zone in College Station, and the Aggies have won 24 in a row at home. A lot of kissing the dates today. 41 points put on the board, 524 yards of total offense. That 80 yards from Napoleon Kaufman, by the way, a season low for him in rushing. In the whack, they will meet as unbeatens next week. Colorado State and Utah. Colorado State to 7-0 with their win in Fort Collins. That is 10 straight for Sonny Lubick's team. Well, I guess you can call it a grand salam in the first half. Four touchdowns for Rashani as 16 on the season, and the Bucks lead by 28 over Louisville after the Cards last week handed NC State their first loss of the season. A surprise at Mikey Stadium. Navy, they finally get into the win column this year. We only have three teams in Division 1A that do not have a win. Akron, Ohio, and Cincinnati. Houston also gets a win. Pittsburgh, West Virginia. It did leave us breathless today. The backyard brawl was all you could ask. John Ryan, the touchdown pass to Chad Askew. Hit is down one. That's fourth quarter time remaining. Johnny Majors says, let's go for two. Let's go out and win this game. Well, Ryan, the quarterback, oh, what a perfect option. He's in, and the Panthers lead 41-40. You think this one's over? Uh-uh, not in this backyard brawl. Mountaineers, one last chance. Time running down. Chad Johnston, the quarterback, needs a big play. He's going to unload. Folks, tell me how Zach Abraham, the walk-on, gets this wide open with that much time left in the game. It's a touchdown, and the Mountaineers who blew a huge lead, 31-6, come back to win 47-41 after beating Notre Dame. BC gets another win over Temple. In the Atlantic Coast Conference today, North Carolina State, they're still unbeaten in conference along with Duke and Florida State as they get their victory. I mentioned Illinois, got a little ahead of myself. Dana Howard, who guaranteed the win last week, didn't guarantee it this week, but still helped cause the victory. Time at Boulder, Colorado. The Buffaloes have stampeded their way to a 28 to nothing. So the Buffaloes have stampeded their way to a 28 to nothing halftime lead over the Sooners of Oklahoma. Brad Nessler and Gary Danielson with you up here in the booth. More importantly, really, than the game or Rashawn Salam's first half and four touchdowns, I think, is what Adrian is about to oh, try yeah. to do this, on the field. This, so you got to take a look at this one. This yep. is going all the way. This will be a, something just a, a little bit different. Brad, the many times been coming to Colorado in the past four years, gotten close to rally. But we're going to get closer this time. Here we go. 30 year old college tradition. Right under the Buffalo. He weighs 1,400 pounds for pregame meal. Those 40 pounds of host and Murray. I think I just pulled a hamstring. Nobody decides to the handlers. The on the halfway home. <laughs> Holy cow. He made it. I don't, I don't know how I can top it, but we haven't told Adrian that next week we got even something even more daring planned. We're going to have him walk out in the shoe with John Cooper. <laughs> and they'll both be wearing black jackets. John, John, we're just kidding. He had a big win there, and he's lasted this week. Third quarter. <laughs> we're underway at Folsom Field. P.J. Mills. P.J. got... Peppered pretty good at about the 24-yard line. Lyndon Henry down there in the special team. Stats at halftime, as you might guess, in a 28 to nothing game. 203, the rushing yardage yeah. for Colorado. Pick out any stats you want. You can circle about anything you want in this football game when uh, total domination by the Colorado defense. Uh, a lot of it has been self-inflicted, like this is going to happen right here on this kickoff. Oklahoma comes out at halftime with another penalty, but it's been domination by the Colorado Buffaloes in the first half. Eighth penalty on the kick return, and instead of being out at the 24-yard line, back it goes inside the 15, inside the 10, as a matter of fact. And that's been the story tonight for Derek McGee and the Sooners offense. 
Can you believe it? <laughs> wow. We're going to check back in with him to see just how many muscles he had lost on that one. <laughs> Out across the 10. Ted Johnson meets Moore. The fullback. <laughs> Carson, did Carson do anything to get on camera? Yeah, that's right. Well, I don't know who had it. Who had a tougher ride that first half? Adrian with Ralphie or Oklahoma trying to hold on to that offense? And when he talked about what Ralphie three had for pregame meal, I wondered whose pregame meal was bigger right. too, because we have to go out and eat with him every weekend. Second down, seven. Suiters. And Allen, the second man, kind of ran into his own blocker and Darius Holland all at the same time. And it'll bring up third down and about five or six. I'll tell you what Ted Johnson does so well. You're going to get a double team right here, but watch Ted Johnson come up and just fill the hole. Fullback Gerald Moore is going to come in and try to block, but Johnson just is in the hole, bang. No movement. That forces the running back to find another hole. That's great linebacking. Take the play on at the point of attack and make them go somewhere else. Third down at five. Mills in motion. McGee pump fakes to the right, wants to throw the screen back the other way. Oh, man. Mills just got leveled again, and again it's Darius Holland. Back-to-back -back tackles. Darius Holland strutting his stuff as well he should. Well, it was a double screen. You'll see Garrett McGee fake to his right, throw the throwback screen to the wide receiver, but it was so slow to delay that Darius Holland came off the block that time from Harry Stamps and came back and made the play from behind on a wide receiver screen. Three and out, just what Oklahoma didn't want, and they almost had the kick blocked. In fact, it might have been partially tipped. The flag flies in. We'll have roughing or running into the punter unless that ball was tipped i'm not sure it wasn't well that's going to be the question is whether he got a piece of it or not maurice Her henriquez thought he had a piece of the play he doesn't seem to be arguing first with ball, the ball roughing the kicker first down and bill mccartney saying what i was questioning was not the ball tips and maybe we can get another look to check here it comes. 45, Enriquez comes from the right side, your left side on the screen, and does he get a piece of the ball? You really can't tell on that play. It's a good call, obviously. You could tell how the punter was extended there, and it could have been dangerous for him, but Enriquez seems to not be arguing very hard, so it appears to me that he did not touch the play, and that's a good call. Wow. So that gives the Sooners a first down out of the 28-yard line. You know what I really think happened is he got in there so far it forced the shank at the point. That could have been it. The wishbone for Oklahoma. And on the pitch is Frazier. And Frazier got nice yardage across the 35. And Darius Holland again. Darius Holland, he's a quite a player, a military brat from Las Cruces, New Mexico. He lived in Panama for a time, and they say the greatest thing about it, because he lived in Panama, he has the opportunity now to talk trash in both English and Spanish. <laughs> He's some kind of player, though. Yeah, I don't know if brat goes with 285. That's true. At least I wouldn't say it. Right. He's got five tackles tonight, and he's been in on the last three. Second and short, and looks like a first down for Gerald Moore. Well, I think for Gary Gibbs in this second half, he's just got to get his football team thinking about not so much winning this football game, but just coming out and playing some solid football through this half. And, you know, look on maybe, you know, in the fourth quarter, you look up and you if you're within two touchdowns, then you start to maybe get excited again. But right now, Gary Gibbs has to get his football team back for the rest of the football season, let alone this game. A nice job controlling the first half against Texas, and then saw Texas turn it around in the Cotton Bowl last week. Subsequently, the Oklahoma lost. Gerald Moore lost his footing. Well, I tell you, whatever kind of shoes Oklahoma has on, they better take them off and get them switched because there have been so many slips in this football game. And again, I believe, kind of becoming a little redundant on it, it's just guys trying to make something out of nothing now. I think they're wearing the same kind of spikes that uh, Adrian had on when he ran the <laughs> <laughs> We have to check in with him here in a couple minutes. Uh, he's not ready. He's not ready. <laughs> Second down, 12. 
Great drop by McGee. Look out for behind. Got rid of it as he was hit. Greg Jones on the backside came around the corner like a freight train and let McGee have it. The pass was completed, so they're going to move it up there to the 33-yard line. Got a short completion. Got hammered as he threw the ball and now faces a third down at 17. 0 for 7 tonight. And the key, though, is 11.3 yards per attempt on that. Just can't leave yourself in those situations all night. Fires it out for his tight end, Alexander. He got up near the 40, but Hudson was there to meet him. Maybe a gain of five, that's about it. Yeah. It's time to punt again. That was a morale booster, but it really had no chance of trying to pick up a first down. That was a get out of the huddle, not get sacked play. Tim Daughtry has been a busy punter tonight. Almost had the last one blocked. He's lucky he has a left knee. No kidding. And Hudson, who had a long return in the first quarter before fumbling near the end of it, back for Colorado. One comes off the side of his foot a bit. Chris Hudson just waves it off. It'll go out at about the 36-yard line. That's where Colorado will start on offense. And they are healthy and ready to go with a 28-point lead. How about our sideline man, Adrian Carson? Is he healthy? Healthy and ready to go. <laughs> yeah, you guys still think I'm in a Ralphie recovery? Look, never broke a sweat. I was only going about half speed. <laughs> All right. Look, look at this. I've just been told I lettered in running Ralphie. I'm going to fit in right about here, guys. Look. She actually signed it herself. One question, strange cologne she had. <laughs> hey, eat, uh, eat Adrian, my chips. Adrian, she, yeah. it never stopped you before, the cologne. You know. Well, you know. <laughs> Tell so, you guys, close as I've been to a girl in about four years' time. Yep, and the last one you were close to looked a lot like Ralphie. Thanks very much. Penalty against Colorado. Moves it back to the 26-yard line. Bill McCartney said this week that he thought his team would face a wounded group of Sooners, and he said they are dangerous when they come in wounded. Well, they came in wounded, and the gashes are getting deeper. And the other thing I, I was impressed talking to him is he says, we know the position we're in now. We can't lose a football game. No letdowns, no excuses is his uh, theme for the rest of the year. Salam on the pitch. Rashawn Salam out to the 31 yard line. Give him five more. I was talking to, with Rick Neuheisel and he was talking about calling plays, what an offensive coordinator has to think about down and distance, what uh, defensive tendencies. And I go, if, if I was calling plays with your team, I'd think about three things weapons, weapons, weapons. <laughs> because you got them all over, just use them. And uh, Rick got a good chuckle out of it, but. Uh, He's involved in the passing game. He's brought a lot of stability to Cordell Stewart, but Elliot Uzelak, the man upstairs, is the guy who's directing it. Second down. Stewart over the middle. I was just going to say Fourier's maybe the only weapon they haven't used much tonight, and he gets the grab and looks like he has the first down. Ariel Freeman, the linebacker, made the hit. This kid will be some kind of tight end at the next level, too, you can bet. Well, he's got a little bit of a groin injury. This time, I, I think it's a delay. I didn't have my eyes on him. Yeah, a delay for the outside linebacker. Buy some time, and then he's the check-off, the drop-off man if no one's open downfield. Fourier is just a complete tight end, a great blocker, has tremendous hands, and I think he's probably not 100% in this football game yet, but uh, a guy, when he's 100%, is as good as anyone in the country. Well, he has his BA in communications, working on his master's. 20 receptions for the year, 85 for his career. Not bad for a tight end, huh? Stewart all day. Cordell's going to take off. I'm not quite sure how he got by Tyrell Peters, who looked like he had a beat on him, but Stewart did and picked up 11 and a first down. Well, he wanted to go deep that time to Michael Westbrook, but they bracketed him. But uh, Tyrell Peters right now is saying, man, quarterbacks are not supposed to be able to run like right. that. I don't know if he had, if they were playing flag football that time, but he'd been able to even get a flag out of him that time. Out to the 49-yard line. The Colorado offense, nine minutes left, third quarter. It's 28 to nothing, Buffalo. I'm really impressed with Peters and Freeman, though, the two inside backers for Oklahoma. They have been around the ball on virtually every snap. 
Bryce allowed this time a cutback and then a little dance into the waiting arms of Brent DeQuazy, the junior from Midwest City, Oklahoma. Sooners, uh, the uh, Buffaloes rather rushing tonight. And Rashan Salam in particular, here's where he's done it. Yeah, you can see this is the big play right here. He had a, a huge play where he dashed it on that one play, uh, the stretch play early in the game. But, you know, a lot of these plays, Brad, this play right here, 13 yards, this might have started this way and come into here. 40 yards over here might have started this way and come that way. His vision on these plays is just amazing. That's why you upgraded that vision to an A-plus earlier. Oh, yeah, you, it was a PTA <laughs> meeting. You came in and made lobby for him. On play action, Stewart in trouble. Got away from one, but not the second way. David Campbell finally puts down Cordell Stewart way back near the 37-yard line. Yeah, Colin Rosenberg is the guy, number 27, though, that stayed at home early in the game. Uh, Sterling Lucky didn't do that, but Rosenberg stayed with Stewart, and that's the key when you got a quarterback that come out of there on that naked play. And now David Campbell, who subsequently made the sack of Cordell Stewart down after running all over trying to track down the Buffalo's quarterback. Coming into this game the last two years, Campbell had 12 tackles in games against Colorado. And he comes up favoring his right leg. So the big senior's gonna have to head off. You'll see what Rosenberg, he's right here. All the action is gonna go this way, but you gotta stay home and account for the quarterback. You'll see Rosenberg, everybody's going one way. Let's see if Cordell Stewart has the ball. That's what made the play, and then Campbell comes in and kind of gets hit by his own guy. I think it was Rosenberg that put his shoulder on his ankle. Campbell goes out, and Baron Tanner comes in to take his spot. David goes out with a five-tackle night so far, but uh, the last one proved costly to him. Third down at 22. Here's where you have to use your weapons even more. Empty backfield with Salam out as a receiver now, too. Stewart in trouble, and Cordell is hit. And dropped for the second time in the series. Barry Giles and Cedric Jones in on the hit. Oklahoma finally was able to force a third and long, very long situation. Three-man rush and great coverage in the secondary that time. Cedric Jones got at least a piece of that sack. He came in with six Banner. on the uh, year. And Rod Henderson did a good job on Westbrook that time, too. Andy Mitchell set the punt. Darius Johnson back deep. Mitchell, not a very good kick. It takes a Sooner bounce and out of bounds in front of the Colorado bench at the 35-yard line. Cordell Stewart talking it over. Hasn't scored this quarter, but his team's up by 28. Holder from Flagstaff Mountain at Passion Point. I didn't make it up there, Passion Point, this trip. Well, I know you and lovely wife Nancy went up there somewhere, didn't you? No, we are up in Netherland. Oh, we Netherland. <laughs> Brown has just checked in, almost fumbled it there. Great Got play his by own hop. Darius Holland that time made a great play. He was getting blocked. When you can't block the defensive end, the fourth man in, when you're running an option play, if he can play off a block and still make a play on a quarterback, that's bad news. Darius Holland's having a super game. He's going to graduate in the spring as Darius in criminal justice, and what he's doing to the Sooners in the last couple series has been criminal. Well, you know, one play he's knocking down a wide receiver on a screen pass, the next play he's knocking down the quarterback on an option. And now he's getting the crowd into it by getting the fist thumping up there as Terrence Brown looks in. Gives to Moore, the fullback, across the 40 to the 42. Rosga came up from the secondary to have to hit the big guy. One of the keys Watson Brown felt in this football game was running the fullback, and also he did not feel comfortable that he could march the ball down the field against the Colorado defense. He felt he had to have at least three big plays, three plays of 40 yards or more. Hasn't done it so far in this football game. Nope. Not even close. Third down at three. Brown keeps it. Maybe shouldn't have. Matt Russell, the linebacker. Shannon Clavel, Greg Jones, you name it, they were there, and he's short by about a yard. Tough spot in field position, Gary, but down 28 nothing, fourth and one. What do you think? What the heck, huh? Well, uh, nothing's been working so far. You might as well you might as well try a fourth down play. First, second, and third down hasn't done much for you. 
And so they will. Five out of nine on the year. In the wishbone. I don't know. Brown, the quarterback, keeps it, and I don't think he got enough. He slipped on takeoff, it appeared again. Trying to follow his right guard, Shannon Clavel, down on the bottom of the pile. Colorado says we Boy, stopped him. Oh, they got they got a fortunate uh, spot, spot right there. They got a there. great spot. I thought his knee and elbow came down on the ground much before that. But Gary Gibbs gets away with the gamble, no matter what. First down at the 45. All weeks are tough, but for Gary Gibbs, an especially tough one again after losing to Texas again last week. And that's the one if you're an Oklahoma coach. They don't like you to lose. Brown, maybe three. Before Ted Johnson and Rosga are there again. Gary Gibbs in his sixth season, 41 wins, 19 losses, two ties. It's not a bad record. 0-4-1 against Colorado. This week, the talk shows, as they always will, lit up after the loss to Texas. And maybe the most damaging, former Heisman Trophy winner, Steve Owens, was a guest on one of those and said, maybe it's time after six years, maybe Gary Gibbs has had all his chances he needs. Maybe we have to move in another direction. Now, when a guy that wins a Heisman and is as respected, I guess, as... Steve Owens is by the OU fans. That one carries a heck of a lot of weight, so that made the week tougher for Coach Gibbs. I'm sure it's uh, not a vote of confidence, let's put it that way. I don't think anything Steve Owens said really changes the situation for Gary Gibbs. He took over a program that was in deep trouble. Illegal procedure. All start on the offense. Five yards, repeat second down. And it, you took over a program that didn't have scholarships, and he's right at him. Had a 5-0 last year. He had two tough losses, uh, games that, you know, uh, against uh, the five minutes to go against Texas A&M, they were five points down, and, of course, they had a tough loss to Texas. So, you know, they're running into a buzzsaw. Colorado's one of the top three teams in the country. That's right. Second in the dozen. Brown with a pitch. And again, Allen slipped. And coming up, Donnell Leomiti. To meet him. The frustration from the Oklahoma football players, I really have never seen anything like it. We saw Wisconsin get bombed out of here, but it was turnovers. This has been a complete disintegration from within, in my opinion. They just have not been able to calm down in this football game. Give Colorado's defense credit, but a lot of it has been self-inflicted by the Oklahoma football team. Jumping off sides, penalties on special teams. It's been very, very nasty. They look like a group of boxers who never broke a sweat before Absolutely. they got to the ring. Absolutely. Third down, 13. Brown pump fakes right, goes back to a screen pass the other way to Allen. He does what he can. He got into Colorado territory, but only to the 49, and that is, again, four yards now short of a first down, fourth and four. Well, they're going to have to go for it again, and they're, they're into the mode now. You just got to use all four downs the rest of the game. I think that was a great call by Watson Brown. Terrence Brown is not a great thrower, so you got to give him something that he can complete. Watson Brown, of course, head coach at Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt, no mystery. He coached the wishbone before, so he's familiar with it. Although he said this is not a wishbone. This is a three-back offense. And enough confusion that a timeout's called. We'll take a break with a big fourth down facing the Sooners when we come back. And they're staring down a 28 to nothing barrel. Battle by 28 coming up later in the game. We'll be selecting our Visa players of the game. Well, if Oklahoma have any chance, here's their play of the game. 16 yards. This is the eighth play of a 16-yard drive so far. Fourth and four. Pitch to Frazier. Nothing doing. Dalton Simmons from the corner made the tackle. Tremendous assignment defense by Colorado that time. Inside guys played the fullback, the linebackers played the quarterback, and Dalton Simmons fought off the wide receiver in the block and bought time and made play on the, on the running back. That's how you play defense against option football. And right back to the Buffalo's offense it goes, courtesy of that Colorado defense, the 49-yard line. Herschel Troutman's come in at the tailback spot for Colorado. 
Whether we've seen the last of Rashad Salam, I'm not sure. But this little freshman's quite a package, too. Play action. Stewart steps up. Throws short to Troutman. What I tell you? Troutman got a great block. Herschel Troutman to the 13-yard line. Everybody around Colorado says, mind you, of Eric Bieniemy. Just a freshman, going to drop it off, takes it to him first. Cordell Stewart wants to go long, but then he drops him off from the left side of your screen. Trotman comes in, you're going to see Michael Westbrook just clean up on the safety that time. Malin Wesley and the little guy takes it around the corner. And, I, you know, bad news for people who play Colorado, there's three other freshman running backs that are going to be in here, too. 39 yards on that one, career long for Herschel. Got it down to the 12. Here he comes on the ground. And he bangs his way close to the 8. Arthur Atkins, one of the guys in on the stop defensively for the Sooners. Troutman, they talked to him about the fact that there is a physical size resemblance, and really, they look, uh, he looks like Eric Bianami right down to the haircut. He's what? You know, I haven't seen Eric that much without his helmet on, so I don't know that much about him. <laughs> There's a good look at Herschel Troutman. Out of Naples, Florida, one of only 11 backs in Florida history to have gone over 5,000 career yards in high school. Yeah, Elliot Uslak says the guy just keeps making plays in practice. I got a play. Cordell Stewart flips it out of the backfield at Troutman. And Herschel takes it. This was the, the five. I'm sorry, Brad. This was the screen pass that really hurt Wisconsin when we were here earlier. A little bit of a flare pass. The tackle and the lineman go downfield. You'll see Derek West right here. He's going to release number 72 to the outside. It's a little bait play. It's a long handoff to the to the running back, and it's a play when you catch a blitz is very successful. Uh-oh, here comes number nine, Leon Merritt. He's the lead man if they're going to line up in an eye. Now, if I was the linebacker right now, I'd be making sure I got all four of my snaps buckled on the helmet. <laughs> There's Merritt lining up in front of Troutman. Third down and two. Westbrook in motion. Troutman behind his blockers. Touchdown, Colorado. Well, Troutman's... Oh. True freshman and Leon Merritt, number nine, is a true freshman. Follow number nine. You might be able to get in the end zone. Leon, Leon, find somebody. Well, by the time he blocked anybody, Leon Merritt was already in the end zone, so it wasn't too tough. Let's give credit to a lot of the offensive linemen on that play. Virtually put his hand out and found Merritt's butt yeah. on the way into the end zone. <laughs> Nobody could find Troutman <laughs> behind Merritt. <laughs> Merritt's 6'3, 240. Oscar Ritchie in point after is good. And the shutout, and what is now a route, continues with 109 left in the third, 35-0 Buffalo. 35-0 Colorado. Easy schedule puts Nebraska number one, says the sign. <laughs> a little bit of a dig on the Cornhuskers, who played Kansas State today and survived that one, and they will move up in the charts because, as I'm sure all of you know by now, this late... Well, I'm not so sure about that. Loss. I think Colorado could pass Nebraska. Mills will down it. And again, the Sooners will have to work from the 20-yard line. Auburn derails Florida today. Nebraska survives Kansas State. And Penn State and Michigan had quite a classic that Penn State won by a touchdown. And now Colorado number four. And like an old Beatles song, going up the charts with a bullet. We don't know how far the bullet will take them, though. There you see Herschel Troutman. Having some fun up 35 and on Garrick McGee back in at quarterback. Lost one out for more. Nice catch by the fullback. Nice over-the-shoulder grab by Gerald Moore into Colorado territory, a pickup of 34. Same play that was intercepted right before half when he found man-to-man -man coverage that time, and he thought it was zone. You see the running back come out to the left side of your screen. Nice touch. 
over the defensive linebacker to the outside. Roscoe is the guy that makes the save. He's the one that made the interception yeah, earlier. But he was the in the middle line. of the field zone that time. It wasn't man to man, so a lot different coverage. Longest play of the night for the Sooners. McGee goes back the other way. High and incomplete intended for Michael McDaniel. Ends up second down and 10 at the Colorado 46. McGee had hit his last five passes before that one. Well, there's no doubt McGee's got a good arm and he's a good passer. I just don't think that uh, Oklahoma is programmed to throw the ball like this in a come from behind position. You know, when we talked to Watson Browns before the game, uh, he just said, I just don't want to get behind in this football game. We just can't come back in the type of game when we're down two, three touchdowns. You can see some frustration on the face of the offensive coordinator of the Sooners. Second down at 10, final minute, third quarter. McGee throws in and out of the hands of all that probably should have been handled by Jawan Penny. Well, there's the problem. You know, again, you know, you're sending two guys out on a pass uh, a pattern. Colorado has four defensive backs, and you're throwing to a guy that's double covered. Now, it's a nice throw, but you still have to make a play. You've got Leo Metti and Dalton Simmons covering the guy on the curl. And it leaves another third and long situation. Third down at 10. 50 seconds left in the third quarter. There's the third down passing by McGee, but the big zero over there is not picking up the first down. Those four completions don't mean much if you don't move the chains. They need 10 here. Garrick fires incomplete. P.J. Mills had cut inside to throw in outside. Simmons again was covering. And it's fourth down. Getting any easier for the Sooners, and Daughtry will have to come in and kick it away. And right now, Colorado doesn't have anybody back deep in punt return formation. Trying to scramble somebody back. Rosga says, I got it, you yeah, take it. Rosga says, I don't want to go back there and pump. <laughs> Helps Davis finally trots back. Hudson normally would have been their punt return man. I don't know where he was. Davis just gets out of the way, lets the punt go, and uh, doesn't hurt Colorado that they didn't have a punt return man back there. Yeah, they had a defensive stage. They just kept their regular defense out there. So, back comes the Colorado offense and a new quarterback as they think this one is in hand enough that Cordell Stewart's night is done. In comes Coy Detmer. And Coy Detmer saw a lot of action two years ago against this Oklahoma Sooner group. There's his numbers on the season. We saw him throw that touchdown pass. Get ready to watch a guy who loves playing football. It's Troy Detmer. He smiles even after he gets hit. Trotman. And Herschel Trotman, eight more yards in a hurry. Rod Henderson hit him low to knock him off his pins. Detmer was pushed into duty two years ago against the Sooners because of an injury to Cordell Stewart. And while he put up big numbers yardage-wise and had a couple of touchdowns, he also had five interceptions. He was just a freshman then. He was just a freshman, but he's a, a type of guy that's got no quit in him. When he's behind, he's just going to keep fired in there. Interceptions really doesn't bother him. He's got that attitude of a passer, and he really just uh, keeps throwing the ball downfield, no matter what the circumstances. He's going to have to hold his first pass for the fourth quarter because we played three at Folsom Field. And on a home turf, the Buffaloes have control throughout. They lead 35 to nothing. After introducing the very friendly... Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson, and Adrian Karsten in Boulder, Colorado. Nessler, Gary Danielson, and Adrian Karsten in Boulder, Colorado, where the Buffaloes lead 35 to nothing as we start the fourth quarter. And a second down and two. For Coy Detmer, off play action, wants a big one, lays it out for Westbrook, got it, and Westbrook has it. Down to the 12-yard line. As Gary said, he loves to play the game. 60-yard pass hookup. Well, the focus of Colorado's football team will change next year. It'll be more pass-oriented around this guy right here who is as talented as passer as probably any backup that ever played college football is right now. You see the great fake, and he has just a tremendous touch. Now, this one wasn't a real difficult throw because he beat Tim Denton by about six yards, but... Coy Detmer just has that feel for throwing the ball that you can't teach. 
to the 13-yard line, and now Troutman on a handoff. Troutman got a couple and then got pasted by Perry Collier. Let's go down to Adrian Carson Moore on Coy Detmer. Brad, that play is the same one I saw in practice on Thursday, only Coy threw it like 70 yards in the air. And, Gary, you know there's a difference. Now, he'll pass it long as opposed to just throwing long. Christian Fourier, the tight end, told me he would love to have just another year to play with Coy just because he's such a tough kid. <laughs> well... I don't think uh, Christian knew he was going to be on national television <laughs> with that shot right there, but, <laughs> you know, I could throw it 70 yards, too. It just took me two throws. <laughs> Second down and eight. Troutman cuts back, and he's down to the five, a couple yards short of the first down. Also, Phil McCartney talking with us about Coy Detmer, and he did throw a touchdown pass in the game against Wisconsin, and he said, you know, I can't send a kid in there and tell him not to do the things he loves to do. You can't hold back well, second-line players. I, I picked Colorado to win the national championship this year in a preseason uh, polls because I felt they were the only major team that had two quarterbacks. And, you know, Nebraska now losing Tommy Frazier. I think Colorado's a better football team than Nebraska right now without Tommy Frazier. Well, Dean and Warfel at Texas, uh, at Florida, both played today, and they lost. That's the other group you would look at yeah, that has pretty good right. depth. Chapman. Don't think so. Might have gotten inside the five, but Darius Johnson put a hit on him. And a flag down in the mix. And it is holding against Colorado. This might move it back just far enough where they can throw. <laughs> 35 to nothing now, and it's the largest lead ever against Oklahoma by a Colorado football well, team. Well, and remember what Bill McCartney inherited when he came to Colorado. This is a team that had 82 points scored against them by an Oklahoma team. So mm -hmm. what a job he's done to turn around a program, and now he's one of the elite programs in the country. And as long as he's here, he, they will be. And on the other side... The record, as you saw earlier, against the teams that Sooner fans want this man to beat, the Nebraskas, the Texas, and the Colorados, not what he wants it to be, obviously. Third down, 11. 13-11 left in the football game. Tight end in motion. Detmer goes back, fires to the end zone, just off the fingertips of Phil Savoy. Got a hand on it, just couldn't hold it. Oh. Beautiful read, nice throw. You like your quarterbacks to not throw behind in those type of plays, and Coy Detmer put it in a spot where just his guy could get the play. You see, he goes from his left side to the right, perfect touch, just like his brother Ty did. Puts it in a position where it's either a touchdown or nothing. Nice throw and a nice layout by Savoy. Foster Ritchie in. Out of an Anderson hold, we'll try one, 32 yards. And he got it. With 12 minutes, 53 seconds remaining in the football game, fourth-ranked Colorado set to move up in the polls, and they've moved it up to 38 to nothing. Russell Athletic, because it's made tough, it has to be. Hey, kid! Hey, you got my lucky jersey. Yeah? I got kind of carried away. Can I have it back? You gotta be kidding. Come here, you little pissed Get up on that. No! You want athletic wear that can survive anything? Oh. Get Russell Athletic. Get tough. Who was that kid? I don't know. Just sign him up. ESPN's presentation of CFA College Football is brought to you by Porsche. Imagine the thrill of having to commute day after day after day. Colorado's commuted all over the Sooners of Oklahoma. 38 to nothing with 12 minutes and 52 seconds left in the football game. Oscar Ritchie and set the kick. Frazier and Mills are back for the Sooners. T.J. Mills draws a beat on it from the six-yard line. Cuts outside, got to the 20, and that is it. As we said, Colorado, without a doubt, will be moving up. And how far do they move up when they go to 6-0, and Gary? Well, here's what I, if I was voting, this is what I would do. I would leapfrog Penn State to number one, of course, they lost. And I would move Colorado to number two, and I would make Nebraska number three. I think Colorado's played a better schedule. 
And I think Penn State, by the little better win against Michigan than Colorado did at Michigan, deserves the number one spot. Well, this top 25 team that Colorado has faced in the last five weeks, and they've got two lying ahead, the Big Eight, that are huge, Kansas State and Nebraska. But tonight, number 22, Oklahoma came in here, and they have been knocked around by the Buffaloes. And they continue to do that as Frazier goes down for a loss. John Knutson made the stop. Talk about ranked teams. And you look at some of the clubs around the country that have wins against ranked teams. Colorado already with three. That's soon to become a four. Yeah, let's do that right now. Let's okay. make that a four. And Nebraska got one today over Kansas State. Colorado State. Hey, Sally Lubick's club's unbeaten yep. over in Fort Collins, not too far from where we are. Penn State, two. And Auburn got their first one with a win over Florida. You talk about picking a big one <laughs> to well, beat. Well, and, that, and that's the, the Colorado argument. I mean, we played the toughest schedule, and uh, we, we took them on, and we beat everybody. We deserve it. McGee to Mills trying to break a tackle. He does get a first down, though. Nice job by Mills that time, waiting for the ball and making a fake just as he receives the ball to try to make a big play out of the pass. B.J. had a couple of catches for 56 yards and the only Oklahoma touchdown last year in the 27-10 loss to Colorado. P.J. goes by P.J. because his first name is Percy and, his next, and, and so he prefers it. Percy James, P.J. sounds a little better, doesn't it? And he runs a 4-3, too. So. He's been involved a lot tonight, mostly the kick returner. McGee tripped up. Clint Moore. Clint Moore started at nose tackle in that game we did against Wisconsin when Clavel was out with a suspension, and he just broke right through for this one. Here's Clint Moore right here. He should be blocked. This guy out here is the option man. When the inside man is being defeated on a blocking scheme for an option, that's going to tear your option apart. The defensive end has to be accounted for by either the fullback or the guard. Second down and 14 with the loss. Oh. McGee, little flea flicker, gets it back. And now throws to a wide open receiver, but he threw it over to the Colorado bench instead. And Derek got hammered and holding the shoulder. I'll tell you, Brad, to Juan Penny, number 89, was standing out on the 40-yard line, no one within 15 yards of him. He's the number one guy. Again, Oklahoma not giving the play a chance in this football game. Too anxious. The play was set up perfectly in the middle of the field, wide open. Derek McGee has been getting up all night. So he showed what he's made of, but the third down conversion is an awful night in that category. Gehring loads it, got a man wide open, and he made the catch. At the 39-yard line, Jawan Penny. Well, he got open again, Gary. Yeah. <laughs> Both would have been touchdowns. This time, a busted coverage between Eric Mitchell and the free safety that time and let the receiver just run right down the field. But Penny does make a beautiful catch on a ball that was slightly overthrown. Ryan Black, the safety, holds on the tight end, Alexander, and boom, right down the middle of the field. The backups for Colorado secondary are starting to make some busts back there, and it's causing some problems. Jawan Penny, first catch ever against Colorado, and a career-long 33-yarder laid out, made a nice grab. First down at the 39-yard line. 10.35 left in the game. Frazier. To the 36, John Knutson made another tackle. I tell you, Derek McGee will absolutely kill himself after he sees that flea flicker play, how open Penny was on that first lateral play back. You just don't get him open, any more open than that. Easy for us to say from level five. Yeah, but that's his, that's his number one guy on that play, and you know that's who it's designed to go to. You got to say you got to throw it to the guy. Second down and seven. We're under ten minutes in the ball game. Play action for McGee. Deep down the middle. Oh, what a hit. Michael McDaniel might have mistimed his jump just a little bit, and then he was made a McDaniel sandwich at about yeah. the 17-yard line. A McDaniel. Kenny Wilkins, number 20, was sitting in center field that time. If he'd have looked for the ball, he could have got a pick, but all he had eyes for 
was for McDaniel on this play. You're a, 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 a Mc, McBurger right here, and he was coming to get it. It's ready. Oh. Here I come. Boom. Was Matt Russell with? from one side and Kenny Wilkins from the other. Was that with or without fries? <laughs> Either way. <laughs> Third down and seven. McGee lays it out long for Mills. Almost intercepted by Eric Mitchell. And now we've got a lineman down. I think it's J.R. Conrad, the right tackle for OU. Big junior, 311 pounder. Absolutely nothing worse in a game than being shut out 38 to nothing and having one of your starters in that position. We'll take a timeout with the injury with nine minutes and 37 seconds remaining in the ball game, and it's Colorado 38, Oklahoma nothing. Now the good news for Oklahoma, 9.37, all that's left, I guess. Shooters trying to hang in there and scrap, but they're trailing the fourth-ranked team of the country by 38 points, and they have a fourth down and seven. McGee steps up, had a tip at the line, incomplete. Mike Phillips, I believe, is the guy who got his hand on it. Everybody in the act. Offense and defense and special teams. Just a couple of miscues as far as turnovers by Colorado, or this thing would be looking worse. Check in with Mr. Karsten. Brad, a lot of the physical dominance we have seen on Colorado's part, a lot of that credit has to go to E.J. Doc Priest. He is actually a doctor, really has his Ph.D., really the only strength and conditioning coach in the country who has such a degree. Now, his approach to the Buffaloes is running 12 races, if you can believe that. Not 12 games, 12 races. What he wants to do is have them peak physically, actually on a certain hour on game day, or in this case, game night. The idea of just maintaining strength in the weight room is gone. He wants new personal bests every week. He's also Phil McCartney's bodyguard. He comes past me about five minutes and says, back up, back up. <laughs> That's the second big Buffalo you got next to tonight. Second down and four is Detmer on a broken play, picked up six. Close to a first down is going to be Lyndon Henry. Lyndon Henry is another true freshman that Colorado people are very uh, excited about and uh, is really coming on. He had not gone through what they call the NCAA clearinghouse the last time we were here, so he didn't play against Wisconsin because his transcripts from high school had not all been cleared through for him to uh, take part in that game. From Port Arthur, Texas. Goes about 195 pounds. Third down a yard. Here he comes again and got the first down. Out to the 48. Roderick Simpson is the one that hit him low to make the first contact. So we're down to eight minutes and 17 seconds in the ball game. Gary, we were talking about during one of the breaks, Colorado's done this, meaning six wins for the most part on the road. Yeah, that's what's the amazing thing. You know, all these stats that Colorado's put up, they've played the base of their schedule so far on the road, and this is just their third home game right here, and they're going to put on more stats. They said it was nice last night to have their normal Friday night movie, but to actually go to a theater instead of a conference room at a hotel on the road. Penalty markers in the backfield. As Detmer throws incomplete. Yeah, Chris Anderson slipped and fell on the comeback that time in a timing route. Uh, as you see the signal for holding. That'll back it up, make it uh, first down and 20. But the schedule that we talked about, it doesn't end tonight as far as ranked teams for Bill McCartney and the Buffaloes because next up they've got another Big 8 matchup with Kansas State. And then, of course, in two weeks, Nebraska. get back to the 32-yard line. Here's their remaining schedule. Of course, it'll be 6-0 when this one's over. Then Kansas State at second right Nebraska. Oklahoma State at Kansas is no easy one either. Then Iowa State to cap it off. You went through that schedule. You should be somebody's number one. First and 26. And Henry 
wrapped up as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage. Fred Lewis, a nose man. Well, the Sooner defense, I, I think, is you know played about what I thought they'd play like they've just got no help from their offense and you just keep giving back that ball to Colorado you know uh, you give up 38 points but when you consider that your offense hasn't done a thing in this football game you know if, uh, if a normal offense you know keeps the game much much closer for 38 points Oklahoma's total yards in this game 188 yards and I'll bet half of that's been on the second unit for Colorado's defense Denver Trying to throw over the middle, had it tipped inside. Might have been Fred Lewis again. The nose man had gotten away of that aerial. Story of this one, though, is Colorado, when they got it, they did something with it. Like four consecutive touchdowns on four straight possessions. And uh, it was Rashawn Salam. Seven yards, seven yards, seven yards, and then a nine-yarder just to break the monotony. Yeah, and there it is right there, though. Oklahoma right there. Unforced errors, I believe, in this football game has really been tough for Oklahoma. Third and 25, Colorado. And motion might have been the right side of the Colorado line. Melvin Thomas maybe coming out of his stance a little bit too quick. Dead ball, illegal procedure, false start on the offense. Down. Might as well make it third and 30 while you're at it. Now, we've been here uh, two games, 55 points against Wisconsin, 38 points here against Oklahoma. I expect Bill will be sending us airplane tickets to every <laughs> remaining home game. I'm not coming back. <laughs> no. <laughs> third and 30. Play action. Detmer loads it and lays it out for Kidd. And it's intercepted. Wesley picks that one off for the suitors. Malin Wesley, the junior out of Houston. Well, Cordell would have liked, I mean, Coy would have liked to have thrown that another 10 or 15 yards because Kidd had to stop for the ball, but just as good as a punt in this situation. And 644, all that remains. Well, Adrian Karsten has his run with Ralphie Three. Gary and I have our way to get ready for football games. We were out there uh, up near Netherland, our favorite city up uh, the road of peace. A little mountain climbing. Gary obviously bringing up the rear end a little bit. <laughs> you lost your you lost your breath there, yeah, man. Yeah. Well, you know, it was a lot of fun. Played. Got up and saw the sights. You know the sights. 6:44 left of this one. McGee laying it out long and it's intercepted right back by Colorado. And it's Kenny Wilkins bringing it the other way for the Buffaloes. Garrick, there'll be better days or nights. This is not one of them. Kenny Wilkins just playing basically center field, throwing it to Penny again, number 89. There you see him on the, was on the left side of your screen, just standing there, wasn't even in the middle of the field. Just a terribly poor read by McGee that time, trying to force something into nothing. And that's really been the story of this football game. Oklahoma trying to make a play on every play when they really don't have it available to it. So the Colorado offense, having given it up a moment ago, gets it right back with Coy Detmer at the controls of the 35-yard line of the Sooners. And here's a couple-yard pickup down near the 32. Mario Freeman made the tackle on uh, Lyndon Henry. Yeah, Lyndon Henry and Troutman. We've seen all those guys throughout the game. Hey, good to see you still got your cap, oh, yeah. your trusty cap. I'd like to thank the people at Mountain Sports for this. And, By hey, the way, there's your chocolate oh, almond surprise from Bob's Bakery in <laughs> Netherlands yesterday. It was great. Didn't we have a great time? Yeah, super time. Thank the folks up there for helping us with our this the is gonna fun be that my we new, This is going to be my new golf cap when things get nice out. you got to get the light, though, for a little oh, night yeah. play there right. out on your country club course. <laughs> Second down. And six. And the pitch. Henry hit by Tim Denton on the corner. Got a first down. Colorado obviously doesn't need any Coy, more points. Coy Detmer is a pistol. He is. I could shorten that word, but he's a, he's a pistol. <laughs> <laughs> he pitches on this play. Now, most quarterbacks, including myself, after you pitch the ball, says, all right, I did my job. Not Coy. He comes back down the field, 
and throws a block to the left side of your screen right there. Boom. What a guy who just loves putting on the helmet and shoulder pads. Brother Ty won the Heisman at BYU. And Troy will be the man next year here in Boulder. Marlon Barnes, who just checked in, lost his footing. All right, Marlon Barnes is a third true freshman running back that they're excited about. Wow. He's out of Memphis, 5'10", 195. Well, this cheesecake buff is good, though. <laughs> Bob's Bakery. We'll be back there sometime. <laughs> Gotta make it a mess. There yeah, we are. Well, Keith Jackson and Greasy will come. I'm going to leave this for Keith for Greasy when he comes in here one of these days. Second down, 11. Barnes this time gets a little bit of room. Goes down to the 16-yard line. Wendell Davis made the stop. Well, Speed World at 7.50 Eastern tomorrow morning. Formula One Grand Prix of Europe. Round 14 of the World Championship comes your way from Jerez, Spain. Michael Schumacher returns from his two-race suspension with just a single-point lead over Damon Hill. And Nigel Manso returns to have one circuit after finishing out his IndyCar career. Grand Prix of Europe early tomorrow morning on ESPN. Get up, grab your coffee and donuts, and join us for a little racing tomorrow morning on ESPN. And Detmer on the toss. And breaking away as Henry stepped out of bounds where he would have had a touchdown. Oh, a tough run. Just had his foot hit the chalk line on the sideline as he was making his way to the end zone. Well, see, you're seeing Coy Detmer what he's going to have to do if you run this offense one back and two tight ends. The quarterback is still going to have to run the option. Detmer's going to be a little different version. He's looking to pitch it. This time Sterling takes him and another freshman back. You know, I already talked about him. There's three and I'm starting to get confused right here. He stepped out with his left foot that time as Arthur Atkins is the guy who came out and pushed him out. Got it to first and goal, though. Uh-oh, number nine's in. Number nine, Radar, Radar. Follow radar. number nine, London, if you get the ball. Radar. Oh, he's oh they're going to give it to him. <laughs> he almost scored. Lost the ball, but he got down to the one-foot line. Well, Leon Merritt from Detroit is a special football player. He'll probably be a tight end or an H-back in the future of this offense, but he is a prototype fullback. Problem is, Colorado doesn't use a fullback in their offense, so he's going to have to find another position. You block well, you get a gift. Say, here's the ball. That ball was close to being out before he came down, but kind of no factor. Leon goes out. Henry now the tail. Down close get touchdown. I think Colorado's gonna move up at least to number two in the polls. You have to give them credit for their schedule and the way they're playing football this year. I agree. Total domination tonight at home against the Sooners. I mean, this is a Sooner team that played Syracuse, having a pretty good year, pretty tough in Syracuse. Took Texas into a, 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 a yard short. A yard short on Texas. I mean, this is not a bad Oklahoma football team. Oscar Ritchie's legs got to be getting tired. I wouldn't want to send this film on my resume, but uh, it's just... <laughs> 45 to nothing, Colorado. You ever get the feeling if you're Gary Gibbs right now, the only people that are watching are the guys that don't like you anyway? Oh. Isn't that the truth? Coming up next week, we'll take our act back to the Big Ten. Joey Galloway and company. And Eddie George, who had a 200-plus yard day today as Ohio State took care of uh, Michigan State. Taking out Gary's alma mater. The Boilermakers of Purdue are in second place in the Big Ten. That's our matchup, 1230 Eastern, next week. Great job by Jim Coletto getting this team turned around. This team that won one football game last year, Purdue, and now 2-0-1 in the Big Ten, and, you know, a huge win for John Cooper. Uh, you know, I like John. He's a lot of fun to be around, and uh, that was a great win for the uh, Buckeyes up in East Lansing. Not much more fun you can have playing football than to be on the Colorado sideline the last six weeks, though, I don't think. Nope. That's right.
we'll get a new kicker. <laughs> if, Adrian, if Adrian isn't careful, he'll be, he'll be putting him in pretty soon. <laughs> Levin's kick. Knocked out of the end zone almost. I think I just saw my first orange fly in from the stand at about the two-yard line. Rashad Salam has been the man tonight, and you go back to Pops, and you find out that <laughs> what we told you earlier is not all he does. 179 yards, didn't hurt that really tonight with 160-plus. Number one in the country, four more touchdowns tonight. Here's his numbers, yeah. 161 and four. A nice big slice tonight, yep. wasn't it? Uh, you know, he, he's, it's a guy tonight could have picked up 250 yards if they'd have kept him in the whole game. He played very little Rush in the second out. half. Look out, Knutson from the backside. An absolute complete breakdown. A meltdown for the Oklahoma Sooners. They are not doing anything right in this football game. Knutson got his second sack of the night. He's in there having been a starter four games last year. Then had elbow surgery and operations on both his feet. I tell you what, I think it worked because he's covering some ground from his linebacker spot. McGee in trouble again, trying to throw a screen and got it to James Allen. And Allen slithers out to the 20, where it's still going to be third down and 10. Uh, Knutson made the tackle. <laughs> The night when uh, yeah, Oklahoma's wires have been crossed. <laughs> yeah, you just uh, got to try to call your plays and. Uh... But he's still in there. They, still, his best. they still are confused. With the tight end lined up, Jason Harmon, where he is supposed to be. He waits and fires sideline. Nice throw. Got it out to McDaniel for a first down. Uh, excuse me, Jawan Penny for the first down. I'll tell you, a nice throw by uh, uh, McGee. You said it right. He had a guy right in his face that time. I think it was Mike Phillips, number 97. And uh, McGee stepped into the throw and got the ball to Penny. Last time shut out 11 years ago against Missouri. Brown comes in, the backup quarterback is a fourth wide receiver. And a big O up there on the board that the Sooners would love to change. Completion, McGee gets it out. And he got it to Terrence Brown. Quarterback to quarterback. Terrence Brown, they say they think, is the only, uh, only player in OU history who ever have completed a pass and caught a pass in that uniform. And he catches one tonight. Got it in the hip when he uh, caught it as he went out of bounds. But... Selman saying to Gary Gibbs, it wasn't like this when my brothers and yeah. you played. <laughs> that's because there's no Selmans out there, yeah. that's why. Nice block by Allen on Knutson. McGee's still running for his life, and he tosses one into row three, or two, but it is a completion over there to a Colorado fan. <laughs> so here he got immediately says, you've got to give the ball back. Give the ball back. Well, you got to wonder if Gary Gibbs can get this Oklahoma team back up the rest of the football season. This is a humiliating defeat for a team that wanted to come here and show that they could come in and play with the big guys. They're not ready for Colorado. And McGee completes it for a first down. Out to Michael McDaniel out near midfield. Derek McGee still slinging it. He's a kid that grew up in Tulsa, and he knows all about what you're supposed to do when you're wearing these colors for Oklahoma. I think this team should win simply because we're at OU. You know, this is big tradition. You know, we come out with that crimson and cream. You know, we're supposed to win, and that's how it is. I've grown up in Oklahoma, and that's how I, that's how I look at it. So even when we're behind in games, you know, I'm saying to myself, we're going to win because we're OU. We're supposed to win. Not going to win tonight, but that is the mindset Well, when you saw all those great Oklahoma teams the past years. Yeah, unfortunately, though, Brad, and the Oklahoma alumni are going to have to realize this, just like the Ohio State alumni, the Southern California alumni, the game has changed. 
you know, the big schools are not dominating all the athletes anymore, and it, it's an even game. A lot more teams are involved with competitive football teams. It's never going to be like it was at Oklahoma. Scholarship limits have had a lot right. to do with that. McGee in trouble again. Throws complete to his tight end. Jason Harmon made the catch. A little bit short of a first down, I believe. And the clock winding near the one-minute mark. I'll tell you, the Colorado Beds, they're all in it. They want a shutout. They got 75 guys over there trying to cheer on their second-team defense. Nobody's sitting down. McGee, flushed. Throws, got a man wide open. It's a tight end again. Jason Harmon. And Harmon got it down to the six-yard line. First and goal. Nice job by McGee. He switched the ball that time from his right hand when it was apparently going to be stripped. It moved it to his left hand and then came back and threw the ball. Got to give McGee a lot of credit, Brad. Going through this football game, he has been belted through the whole football game. Sure he has. stayed in there and hung in there. The new Porsche 911 Carrera. Excited Colorado sideline, as well, you might see, expect. Excited Colorado sideline, as well, you might see, expect. What takes preference over cheering on your teammates is getting on TV. You know, you, that, that's number one. Especially if you're not a guy that doesn't play a lot. As you said, though, they are all up looking down at that Colorado defense, hoping that their teammates can pitch a shutout. Oklahoma trying to get on the board. McGee leveled as he threw. Incomplete. Phillips came flying in there. So did Murkerson. And that's the kind of night it's been for Garrick McGee, a getting up slow type of night. Tonight's Visa players of the game from Oklahoma, Tyrell Peters. All around the football again, their leading tackler coming in. And from Colorado, I guess we could have given this one out by halftime. Rashan Salam, 161 and four touchdowns. Be so proud to donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund on behalf of those two young men. Second and goal at the five, 44 seconds left. The outcome obviously not in doubt. The shutout is McGee throws to the end zone. Incomplete. Third and goal. McGee made a pretty good throw on that play, and I think, was it uh, Mills that laid out for that one? Just about here, too wide. Still trying to lead the troops to the end zone. With 38 seconds left, down to two plays to do it. Third and goal at the five. They'll go with a run, and Allen's going to be dropped for a loss, and it's Murkerson again. Flag down near the sideline. I, I don't know unless it was, you know, unnecessary roughness, not stopping when the whistle was called. Let's go, guys. 45 nothing. Make a decision. I go to the flag. That's the they good one. <laughs> you cannot have a personal foul on your own guy. <laughs> you hit, you clip your own guy, doesn't count. Uh, there's one of them that came down from the stands. We've seen a few more. Man, somebody took a fight out of that one and threw it down. Mm -hmm. Just like pulling the pin out of a grenade. Right. take a timeout. Yep. We'll talk about that kind of night. 27 seconds left. Fourth and goal. Trying to avoid a shutout. And they'll talk about it. We've got more college football. Don't forget tomorrow. Special edition of college football in the Southwest Conference. Texas coming off their win over Oklahoma last week at the Cotton Bowl. Taking on the Rice Owls. But seven players suspended from that game by Coach Makovic, and that will not make it any easier by any stretch of the imagination. That's tomorrow, 8 o'clock Eastern, special Sunday night edition 
of CFA College Football here on ESPN. You gotta love the camaraderie. You have to love the camaraderie of Colorado's football team right now. You got all the starters in the huddle over there telling the backup guys, don't let them score, don't let them score, going over the assignments. Michael Westbrook. <laughs> We got the punter flexing muscles, you know? <laughs> Only one question remains for the Colorado team. Can they pitch the shutout? Blitz on McGee, and he scored on the last chance. Touchdown, Oklahoma to P.J. Mills. Well, good for Garrick McGee. Absolutely. Guys hung in there. Pitched and caught it. Well, there's disappointment on the Colorado. They got to get used to a little disappointment, eh? Nice catch by B.J. Mills on that one. The ball was slightly low, but he slid through it. And that's for McGee. You get a lot of your teammates on your side for the rest of this football season and for next year, too. When you hang in there and play football when you're getting killed like this game. 218 yards, a career high, four interceptions, but the touchdown finally comes with 23 seconds left. Gary, you said it all earlier. He was shaking up, holding his shoulder, and you said, you don't come out of a game when you're behind. You suck it up and try to get the respect of your teammates. This kid just did, if he didn't already have it. Yeah, I think he did in this football game, and that's something to build on. He beat Eric Mitchell on the slant pass, starting from the right side. There's the Colorado bench. Oh, no, he wanted to shut out. It's going to be in the stats, 45 to 7. Only three seconds left in this one. That's defensive coordinator Mike Hanklitz right in the middle there. Knows his, for the most part, second line troops did the best they could to keep OU out of the uh, end zone. Player of the night. And uh, on his way to an All-American season, Rashawn Salam. Well, I'll tell you, you know, one of the things I asked him about, you know, at the end of this year, you're going to have to make a decision or what will be your decision process about going pro? And he goes... Oh, there is no way. He said, I want to graduate with my guys. I want to be a senior, a leader on this football team. I want team. to be a captain. I want to be a captain of Colorado. I got some things left to do. And, boy, as genuine and, and did not even hesitate. No, nope. he looked totally shocked that you would mention pro football. And his final comment was, I want to be a captain in that last practice before the last game of the season when the seniors come out and everybody else stands up and claps. I want to be in the middle of that senior group. That's one of the greatest answers it, I've heard. It really was. It was... Side kick probably coming to the near side, and Oklahoma may cover it. I think they did. Bounced off, I think Anderson trying to make the play on it for Colorado. And the Sooners recover in the person of Chris Dawson, the linebacker. And Eric McGee can come back out for another play or two or three. I think is this going to have to face another blitz, maybe? Right. <laughs> yeah, well. McGee, near sideline, not enough real estate for Albert Hall. It goes up to make the catch out of bounds. And we're down to 15 seconds. Well, the fans are getting their money's worth. <laughs> ones that have remained. They did for a long time. They waited to see if there was going to be a shutout, and then the packed house of Folsom Field began to empty. And as you can see, a lot of hardy souls still out here on a crisp night. But they were warmed by this team, that's for sure. 45 to 7. McGee throws to Allen. Allen slipped and found his footing and then got peppered out of bounds in front of his Sooner coaches, Merkerson again in on the stop. Time for about one more. Well, I don't think the Colorado offense, uh, headed up by Elliot Uzelak, 
is going to be stopped this year in college football. There's they, two of the reasons right there. Too many weapons. They may stop themselves. They may have one of those days where they stop themselves, but I don't think there's a defense out there that's going to stop them, shut them down. You saw Salam 19 and Westbrook 81. Those are two of the three very dangerous weapons. They've got more than that, but when you throw Cordell Stewart between those two guys, it's something special. Long ball laid out, tipped and broken up, and the game is over. The Sooners did score, but it came much later than it did sooner. And a perfect 6-0 now for Bill McCartney. We'll find out how far his troops will move up in the final polls. Stay tuned for Sports Center next. Steve Levy and Craig Kilborn get you caught up on the day in sports. We'll look at the big games, the SEC and the Big Ten, and pretty hot. Penny, I guess, got a couple more pennies and NBA scores and highlights. That's all coming your way shortly. That's going to wrap it up from Folsom Field for Garrett Anderson, Adrian Carson, and our entire ESPN crew. I'm Brad Nessler saying so long from Boulder, Colorado. Expect Salam. Well, they got a lot of them. Four touchdowns in a 45-7 to win.